Hello, everybody, and welcome to another broadcast here on the Solano College Sports Network as we have some women's basketball here for you tonight in the Falcons' nest as the Merritt Cougars are visiting against your home team, the Solano Falcons. My name is Blake Molina. Joining me tonight in the booth, we have uh, someone new to the Solano College Sports Network, Kayla Bomell. Thank you for joining me tonight, Kayla. Thanks for having me. All right, so as I said, we have the Merritt Cougars who are actually looking for their first win of the season. They are 0, uh, they're 0 and 11 on the season, coming off a 62 to 41 defeat at the hands of Shasta back on the 28th of December all the way last year. And of course, your home team, the, the Falcons, they are nine and six on the season. They're actually riding a three game winning streak. On top of that, they are four and zero at home. Their last victory was Probably the most dominant one I've seen since covering at Solano, 95 to 17. This doesn't even feel real against Gavilan on the 29th of December. Once again, all the way last year. So interesting matchup. I think Merritt's gonna definitely have a tough one against this hot Solano Falcons team. But if one thing I can say that'll be competitive about this game is the rebounding department as the Merritt Cougars on the season average just under 41 rebounds as a team while Solano is just around that 50 uh, mark. So even though Solano's out rebounding them by just about a uh, rebound margin of about 10, you know, Mary can kind of hang and uh, battle on the glass. So that I believe will keep them in the game. But if Solano gets ahead on the glass, I believe Merritt will be in for a long, long night. And we do have, they're announcing the starting lineup. So, and we'll do it here for you. So for the Cougars, we have Adria Perkins, number one. Number two, Lindsay Marohu. Number three, Raquel Higgs. Number 20, Arlene Noel. And number 23, Ayana Dalasio. And of course, for your visit, or excuse me, your home team Falcons, we have number four, the sophomore, Jay Dixon. We got number 11, Aaliyah Hayes. Number 20, Amari Mason. The freshman's been uh, taking the Falcons by storm as she's their now leading scorer at about 13 and a half points per game. And right behind her is the sophomore and one of the leaders on this team, number 21, Julia Wright. And man in the middle, number 35, Alia Arbara. And the Falcons will get the tip. Jay Dixon will start. And we are off and running in this one. <laughs> Again, it's the Falcons versus the Merritt Cougars now as they were once known as the Thunderbirds. They decided to change. I kind of am here for it. Abara's going to draw the foul, and she's going to go to the line to potentially get the first points of this game and get this one underway. Yeah. Falcons are coming out aggressive to start it off. So that's good to see. Yeah, hey, start aggressive and end aggressive. Ibarra <laughs> makes the first free throw. Yeah, even though, you know, the stats and the record might say one thing, you know, you never want to take uh, anybody for granted as Ibarra will make both free throws to give the Falcons the first points in this one. And Solano already playing that, already pressing early. Jay Dixon almost came up with an early steal. Good defense by Ibarra. She blocked Perkins. Perkins was going to the lane. And it'll be under the basket, out of bounds, Maruhu. Rohu, excuse me, will inbound the ball. Nice little pass down low, and nice score. Dalasio, number 23 for the Cougars, scoring their first points. Jay Dixon passing, Julia Wright, Amari Mason, leading scorer for this team. Little floater, a little too strong. Wright getting her own board, kicking it out for a whole new shot clock, smart play. Wright for three, that's her shot, and she's gonna cash it. Julia Wright, considerably one of, if not the best three-point shooter on this Falcons team. And her percentage doesn't speak. She does shoot 29.5% from three, but I actually think that number probably could be a little higher if she didn't struggle early in the season. Nonetheless, though, Julia Wright getting tangled up with Merritt, and it's gonna stay with the Cougars. She was tied up, uh, Julia Wright was tied up with number 20, Oloran Noel. Top of the key is Higgs. 
Marujo. Marujo, a little step back jab. And, I, okay, it's gonna be Solano, or excuse me, it's gonna stay with Merritt. I thought they were gonna call a shot clock, but looks like she got the shot off before the buzzer. Merritt will. Kind of secure the rebound there. But yeah. All good. Marujo. Short there, Maruo gets the offensive rebound, fakes Julia Wright once, goes back up, and she's gonna get fouled. She's gonna get a chance at a three-point play, really got physical down there with uh, Wright and Amari Mason on her. That foul is gonna be on Amari Mason. Oh, excuse me, that foul is on Julia Wright, my apologies. Maruo will Get a chance at the line. She does not complete the three-point play. Solano does have a one-point lead, 5-2-4. Jay Dixon driving. Kick out Amari Mason, three-pointer. Little too strong. Aaliyah Hayes was fighting. Mujo will get the rebound. Thought about it and says, I'll pull it myself. Little short, barely touches the rim. Rebound Ibarra, Mason will Continue to bring it up. Jay Dixon, nice ball movement by Solano. Nice find and nice finish by Julia Wright. <laughs> and Dixon almost getting that steal. She's had active hands early in this one. And Perkins facilitating the offense right now. Marujo in the corner. Julia Wright is gonna tap it, but it's gonna stay with the Merritt Cougars. Marahu, Marahu will inbound the ball, side out of bounds. 10 seconds on the shot clock for the Cougars. Dallasio up top to Perkins. Five seconds left to work on the shot clock. Marujo calls it for herself and says stutter step three. Off rim. And Cougars cannot corral the rebound, so Amari Mason will get in and push. Aaliyah Hayes, that's her bread and butter, that mid-range, just a little strong. Dixon, offensive rebound. Julia Wright, same spot, almost same result, a little strong. Aaliyah Hayes, offensive rebound. That's Jade Dixon taking a rare three, missing. Amari Mason, offensive rebound, and she'll hit the midi. Yeah. Good effort on the offensive rebound. Today. Absolutely. I, I hope to see that all night from the Solano team. Nice active hands by Wright and J Aaliyah Hayes. They did a little tag team action. Julia Wright will finish it off with the layup and the Falcons will go up 11 to four. And the Cougars will call their first timeout in this game. We got 640 left to go in the quarter. Yeah, that, was a, that was a good push by Solano. They had a good little solid run. Yeah, they've Keep been going. aggressive you know, on defense to start, and the you know the last possession in particular, they're already rebounding extremely well, and you know that's uh, you know one of the things that Merritt kind of does have the advantage on, and some teams is the rebounding department. But you know, unfortunately, if they lose that battle, uh, it's going to be an uphill battle for them, no matter who the opponent is. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Solano does have a size advantage. On Absolutely. Them, so they can just kind of go eat up the rebounds and take advantage of that there, but. We'll see. Yeah, Merritt will inbound the ball so far in this one. Solano, eight total rebounds. Merritt, just three, so a five rebound differential. Julia Wright coming up with another steal. She's been very active on the defensive end early. Jay Dixon, a couple spin moves. Amari Mason, mid range. Oh, in and out. As offensive rebound comes up short. Jay Dixon was fighting down there. And they're going to call a blocking foul on her, getting a little too aggressive. as her and Higgs, Raquel Higgs, number three for Merritt, were kind of battling down there. Rahu, Rahu, bringing it up. Passing Higgs, back to Rahu. Thought about it, down to Dallasio. Dallasio loses it right into the hands of Julia Wright. And Julia Wright's gonna push it Nice pass up to Jay Dixon, who actually almost lost it, but ends up with it. Amari Mason, three ball, way too strong. Ibarra, offensive rebound, little strong on the hook. Mason, gonna get the rebound. And Julia Wright's gonna 
slow it down for just a moment. 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Jay Dixon passing Julio Wright. Ibarra top of the key. Oh, red like a book. Is Perkins and all the way, but cannot finish the layup. So she'll have a chance at the line to shoot a pair of free throws. That foul is going to go on Ibarra. Well, I will say I'll give credit for to both teams because I don't want to single anybody out. I like the pace of this game. I think both teams, you know, the, obviously Merritt's struggling on offense, but they are really, really pushing. Um, I like the tempo of the game on both uh, from both teams and on both sides of the ball, not just offense, but defense. You know, they're really aggressive, and they're still moving at a pretty high rate, Every I would say. Everybody's fighting for the rebounds on both sides. Exactly. I'm, I'm always here for, yeah, I'm always here for a rebound in battle, so I got no complaints on that front. <laughs> Merritt makes both uh, free throws, so they'll go up. Or excuse me, they'll be, they're going to add a couple more. Solano does have the lead, uh, 12 to 6. And that foul is on Aloran Noel. Number 20 for Merritt, and Aaliyah Hayes will go to the line and shoot a pair of free throws, looking for her first points of the night. And makes the first one, a little friendly roll. Hayes makes them both. Solano. The press is alive and well. Moranjo breaks it. Shakes and fakes. Mason is going to tap it out of bounds, so it'll stay with the Cougars. Solano does have an eight-point lead. Moranjo to Higgs. Swinging the ball around are the Cougars. They got five seconds to work on the clock. Delisario hits the little layup off the backboard. Bank is open. Bank is open. Jay Dixon, I think just a little too fast there. Oh, I thought you got blocked. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay. All right. Ref was faking me out. Okay, so Jay Dixon was blocked, so it'll be... Solano ball. Dervasani is going to check in for Aliyah Hayes and uh, Kimani Wilbur, number 32, checked in for Ibarra a few possessions ago. Right? Blocked there. I believe it was Noel who got a hand on that one. 4.30 to go in this first quarter. Plenty of time left in this game. It is still anybody's game. Solano does have the early lead. A semi-late whistle there as uh, Imani Wilburn will be called for the foul. Lindsey Marujo will go to the line and shoot two. as she makes the first. She is the leading scorer. She averages just under 13 points a game, 2.6 assists and five boards. She's a 55% free throw shooter. She makes both of those, so I'm sure that percentage will probably go up at the end of the night. And nonetheless, Solano now's lead is only three. Mason, high arcing floater. That one missed and it'll stay with Solano after some of the Cougar players could not corral the board. Aaliyah Hayes taking the quickest breather I've ever seen, and she's coming back in. Uh, she's coming back in for number 21, Julia Wright. I don't even know if she had a chance to get a sip of water. Inbound mid-range jump shot, just a little short. That is her bread and butter. Look at her fight with her own teammate, Amari Mason, for the board, and now she's going to go to the line and get a chance at two free throws.
Mackenzie Marujo is getting charged with the foul and uh, a merit substitution first time. Uh, Raquel Higgs is subbing out. And number 13, Jayla Marie checking in. Turnover there, so it'll end up with the Cougars as Perkins will orchestrate the offense for the time being. Nice ball movement, Marujo. Three-pointer, splash. Lindsay Marujo, Marujo, excuse me, splashing that one down. She now has seven points and she just tied this game up. Aliyah Hayes, kind of a sloppy pass. Marujo comes up with it. She's gonna go all the way. She's gonna get blocked. I believe Amari Mason will get credit for that. Nice up, uh, uphill pass by Jay Dixon. Dravasani, nice little left-handed layup there. Give Solano back the lead. Marujo's gonna run the offense this time. Just kidding, she's gonna let Perkins orchestrate. Nice ball movement, Noel. Marie, down. Good ball movement. Oh, but just a little, little stroppy there and aggressive, but nonetheless, the Merritt Cougars will get a chance. Oh no, excuse me, it's gonna be out. Uh, basket under bound, out of bounds. Merritt's been moving the ball really well the last few times down, so that, that'll be interesting to see how Solano recovers from that, because they've kind of given up their lead by being slopped down on the other end, not passing it, taking shots early in the shot clock, so good for Merritt to speed up, or uh, Perkins at the line shooting one. Yeah, you hit uh, all the nails on the head, Kayla. Pretty much Solano's largest lead was about eight, and they kind of, you know, with their sloppy play, not passing around, and uh, kind of just uh, careless turnovers, Merritt's, you know, starting to play the catch up, and they're extremely close as Perkins does miss both free throws, so Solano does get a break. Wilburn gets the rebound, and she brings it up herself. Little handoff to Aaliyah Hayes. Aaliyah Hayes, fake, and then a three. A little too strong. Offensive rebound. She's an energizer. And, yep. Jervasani is gonna get, is gonna get called for that one. And it is gonna be free throws. Delicio is gonna go to the line and shoot two for the Cougars. Had a Misses the first. I was just getting ready to say she does have a chance to tie the game, but she did just miss that free throw. So the, at least the least she could do is bring this one in to just a one-point game. 2.51 left to go. We got a whole nother quarter and a whole nother half to play, so stick with us. Both free throws missed again by Merritt. That's two opportunities where they've missed both free throws. Jervasani left wide open. That's her range, and lucky break for the defense, but Amari uh, Mason's there to clean it up as she scores the two. She's been all over the boards tonight and she is one of the lead guards, so it's a good sign, but at the same time, some of the Falcon bigs maybe need to step in there and get a couple more boards. Nice ball movement by Merritt. Someone left the door open for Marie as that three-pointer is way off. Marujo, good little fake, and kind of just threw it out. She was looking for the foul. Marie loses the ball out of bounds. Ibarra in, Wilburn out for the Falcons. Also to uh, Jaden Reed checked in, number 10 for Jay Dixon a little bit ago, a few possessions back. That'll be a shot clock violation on Merritt, so Solano will take out the ball here. 17 to 13, Solano with a four point lead in the first. Mason, handoff, Jervasani, Aliyah Hayes, top of the key. Good screen from Ibarra. Nice bounce pass to Mason. Little short there, but again, gets her own rebound. And dances around a little bit and kind of throws it up and it goes off the glass. I think you said it earlier, Kayla, the bank is open and I guess the bank stays open past <laughs> five tonight. 19-13, Solano, six point lead. Good ball movement again for Merritt. 
And turnover by Merritt into the hands of Reed. She'll bring it up. Oh, turnover. Right in the hands of Perkins. And she'll go to the line to shoot two. That foul's gonna go on number 20, Amari Mason. That is her only, uh, the fir her first foul of the game. Perkins will go to the line to shoot a pair of free throws. And she will make the first. Adria Perkins on the season shooting 32.4% uh, from the free throw line. So not one of your better free throw shooters, but nonetheless, she makes both of them. So that number is going to go up, and that's a good sign if you're Merritt. Mason, a couple spin moves. Jervasani in the corner, gets trapped. Reed, top of the key three, just a little strong. Rebound though, Amari Mason. And she's trapped. Good ball movement. Leah Hayes thought about it. Says no, 20 seconds left, plenty of time on the shot clock. Ibarra kind of fighting and wow, they're gonna. she's gonna get the foul called. I was just gonna say that's a travel, but She's gonna go to the line and shoot two free throws. That's why I'm a broadcaster, not a referee. I know that the refs are pretty generous tonight. Very, them. yeah. So many opportunities at the free throw line in the first quarter. Yeah, very, very generous. Uh, I feel like if without all these whistles, we might be about midway through the second right now, potentially. <laughs> Just kind of taking a wild guess here. Ibarra will make the first free throw. Give Solano a five point lead. Jade Dixon is getting ready to check back in at the next whistle. Amari Mason, another offensive rebound and she's gonna go to the line and shoot two free throws. Mason on the season averages 13.6 points per game and 9.4 rebounds. So just a little under a double-double, just shy of a double-double she averages on the season. And tonight she has been already extremely active, especially on the offensive boards. She has eight total rebounds uh, right now. She is, uh, she's got six points and eight boards. Little strong there, that's gonna stay with Solano. Uh, out of those eight boards though, I've counted correctly, six of them have been offensive rebounds. That is very impressive. And Mason actually is gonna get a seat and Jay Dixon will check in for her. Dixon, looking, they're gonna call five seconds. Not a good turnover. Don't wanna say it's costly because we're early in the game, but that's not something you wanna do at any point in the game. Nonetheless, Merritt will get the ball. They're down five with about 45 seconds left to go in the quarter. They do have a shot clock still on. It's gonna be about a 14, excuse me, 13 second difference between game clock and shot clock. Marie, tough floater by Barra is short. And she's pushing. Aaliyah Hayes is in the corner. Not really her range. Nice move and nice finish by Barra. Aaliyah Hayes showing how unselfish she is and one extra pass leads to two points for Solano. Nice job by Barra and Aaliyah Hayes. Two man game. I think just in general, no matter which two players it is, I think they do need to be doing a little more of that though. Mulo throws it up right before the quarter ends and it is short. So Solano is gonna be is gonna go up twenty-two to fifteen. They have a seven point lead after the first quarter. And some pretty solid, impressive basketball. O on both sides, you know, Merritt is down seven, but they really haven't played bad by any means. Just uh, some costly turnovers in the offense hasn't really gotten going a little slow start, but you know, plenty of time left and all that can change, you know, with the flip of a switch. <laughs> Meanwhile, on Solano's side, Julia Wright and Amari Mason have been the one-two punch like they have been all season. Uh, Wright so far with seven points, two boards on a nice three of five shooting. Mari Mason has been extremely active on the rebounds, six of them being offensive. She has eight boards total to go with her six points. And we'll get the second quarter underway in just a moment. 
Just remember, folks, that if you stick with us, we do have a doubleheader tonight. So we do have the women's game going on right now. And then following, uh, not right after, we'll have a little intermission. But uh, the men's team, the Solano Falcons, the men's Falcons will take on the Merritt Cougars. The men's will play uh, following this game. have a double header for you tonight so stick with us we do appreciate it as always any type of support and Solano back in just a moment and we'll get this second quarter underway and yep referee coming over to say let's, let's get out of the huddle and let's get it going And the men's uh, game, uh, if everything goes right, will start at 7.30. So stick with us, and we'll be covering that game as well. Going forward, mainly double headers the rest of the season. And Mason misses the Mason misses the three. Ibarra does get the offensive rebound, but it'll lead to a jump ball, which means it is going to be Merritt's ball. Both teams struggling offensively. Solano has found easier ways to score, but they do only shoot uh, 30. Actually, both teams are shooting the same percentage, uh, just under 31%, 30.8 to be exact. Uh, Merritt is 4 of 13, and Solano is 8 of 26. But Solano does have a seven-point lead. So if you're Solano, you're kind of taking a breath, you know, kind of like, whew, you know, we're hanging in there. But definitely that shooting percentage has to go up or – this could be a different game. Ball movement, Aaliyah Hayes is wide open, passes up on the three and decides to go for the floater instead. Very high basketball IQ for that. That is her, her range. She's not really a three-point shooter, so nice job by her. Roja to Marie. And Merritt moving the ball around. Garcia getting her first touches at the ball and Jervasani is gonna get called for a traveling so it'll go right back to Merritt. And substitution, uh, substitution for Merritt, Garcia is already checking out and Say Chow, number zero, Genevieve is checking in. Marie almost turned it over. Say Chow. Top of the key, 16 seconds on the shot clock, and Lindsey Marujo is gonna step out of bounds right there, so it'll be Solano ball. So real quick, we'll set the lineups for you. So for Solano, Aliyah Hayes, Amari Mason, Julia Wright, Jervis, Ella Jervasani, and Ali Abara are in, and for the Cougars, we have Genevieve Seichow, Lindsey Marujo, Jayla Marie, Laurent Noel and Ayana Dalasio as Merritt will come up with the ball. Mujo passing off her own teammate. Aliyah Hayes will come up with it. Nice extra pass to Jervasani. And that left hand layup is usually money. She did miss it though. Mason. And they're going to call another travel. A lot of traveling calls being called on Solano tonight. It is slowing the pace of the game down, but you got to call what you got to call. JD. In, Jervasani out, Wilburn in, Ibarra out. A couple quick substitutions for the Falcons. And Marie will run the offense for the time being. Pass down to Noel, and then back to Dalasio, and Julia Wright comes up with it. Noel and her were battling, but it'll end up with the Falcons. Call some foul, a foul there, and some merit substitutions. As Say Chow and Dalasio are coming out of this one for the Cougars. 
in for the first time. Number five, Rebecca Hamilton is in there. And then back in is number three, Raquel Higgs. Mara comes up with it. Solano has not been able to really do anything on the offensive end the last few possessions. That needs to change, even though they do have a nine point lead. Little miscommunication there. Solano is playing tough, aggressive defense here as Perkins with Dixon on her, and they're gonna call traveling. That is the right call. Jay Dixon kinda taking a breath of relief like, ooh, don't call that foul on me. I see they're being a little more picky with these fouls and calling the travels this time around. I don't think there's been very few fouls. So yeah. It's good to see them. Yeah, I'm okay with it as long as they, it. you know, keep the pace going yeah. and not <laughs> slow it down too, too much. But 100%, nothing wrong with that. You gotta call the travel. Uh, Jaden Reed in, Julia Wright out for the Falcons. And uh, Perkins uh, just got subbed out and Rebecca Hamilton, oh, excuse me, Kirstine Garcia is back in for Mary. As Higgs is bring up the ball, a little stutter step, kind of throws it up and almost makes it. Wilburn will come up with the rebound and bring it up herself. Pass to Amari Mason, Wilburn. Nice over the shoulder pass to Jay Dixon who's directing traffic. Reed top of the key, Mason. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Dixon will s decide to pull a three, a little short there. Rebound, Merritt. That'll end up in the hands of Hamilton. Giving it right back to Perkins. Jay Dixon, one-on-one -on -one defense. And they're gonna call a foul for being just a little too aggressive. That'll be on Jay Dixon as she was guarding Perkins. Hayes and Jay Dixon out, Julia Wright and Jervasani in. And Noel was subbed out, and Morojo was subbed in for Merritt. Marie pulls a three. Wilburn, good defense as she's short. Jervasani, the rebound up court to Wilburn. And good pass and nice finish by Jada Reed. Solano now has an 11 point lead, 26 to 15. 545 left to go before the half. See if the Cougars can get a little spark before half. Get something going, you don't wanna be too behind in this one. Good defense by Wilburn. She blocked Perkins. Up court pass, Gervasani not gonna make it. Marie kinda gave her a little push in the back, but they're gonna call it on a Solano turnover. Solano now up to nine, or excuse me, 10 turnovers compared to Merritt's 11. Definitely wanna get that, wanna keep those turnovers down, especially when we have a whole nother half to go. Julia Wright out, Aaliyah Hayes in. Merritt's gonna bring up the ball. Marie is gonna orchestrate the show for the time being. Dallasio out to Perkins. Back to Dallasio. Back to Perkins again. They're playing a little game of hot potato. Dallasio. Back to Perkins. Perkins this time to Morojo. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. Got to do something fast. And that's going to stay with Merritt. I don't agree with that call. Two seconds on the shot clock. I think she got a finger on it. I don't know. Uh, if anything. Correct. I was gonna say, if anything, it would be on Reed, but I really didn't even see her touch it, so I'm not too sure about that one. Nice, dr nice play, drawn up beautifully as Morojo inbounds it to Noel for the easy two with only two seconds left on that shot clock. Smart play by the Cougars as they cut the lead down to nine. Reed, top of the key, Marie's on her sloppy pass, and that leads to a turnover. Dallasio should be an easy layup, and it is. 
Reed, Amari Mason will bring up the ball. Marie picking her pocket, and she get, does in the hands of Perkins, who is fouled by Reed. What a sequence of events in favor of Merritt as now Perkins will go to the line and shoot two and have the chance to potentially cut this lead down to five. 26 to 19. Merritt is fighting back. Perkins makes the first. Ibarra is going to get ready to check in at the next whistle. Perkins, both free throws are good. And Reed out, Ibarra in. I was thinking Wilburn and Ibarra would just swap like they've been doing this game, but running a, going with both of the centers is a smart play. Jervasani, nice ball movement. Wilburn, top of the key three, just a little strong there. Rebound Marujo. Pass up to Perkins. Wilburn on her, good defense. Perkins misses. Aaliyah Hayes will get the rebound, and man, a lot of tumbling by Mary, and a lot of tripping. Man, a lot was going on, and it does look like Perkins is sh was shooken up a little bit as her and Ibarra kind of collided there. Lana will hold on to the ball. 24 seconds left on the shot clock as Wilburn will inbound. Merritt playing some good press defense as Aaliyah Hayes with Marujo on her. Nice little bounce pass. Jervasani step back three. Too strong. Wilburn right in her hands, but she is blocked by Dalasio and instead decides to put it right back up. Nice aggressiveness by Kamani Wilburn, number 32, as she gets her first points in this one. Marie, Ooh, almost a dangerous pass. Marujo thought about the three. She has Hayes on her floater over Ibarra. Just short, but she'll go to the line to shoot two free throws. So Kayla, we do have a little time before the half, so a lot obviously can change in those three minutes, but if you were to give one piece of advice for both these teams uh, going into the half, what would it be? What would you, you know, if you were the coach, what would you say in those huddles? I would say keep energy high, keep playing aggressive defense, but don't get sloppy and give them the fouls. Or this, don't send them back to the free throw line because you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to lose those opportunities. And if you're gonna give them free points by doing that, you're gonna make the game a lot closer. So I would just play aggressive, but you know, keep keep the contact, keep the fouls at a minimum, you know. Yeah, well, like your point was just made, don't want to give up free points as Marujo does make both free throws, so those are free points. Ibarra just misses that layup. I'm sure she'll want that one back. Mer uh, the Cougars have cut into this deficit. I was just going to say it just a little more if Perkins would have made that and one, but she'll go to the line to shoot two. Uh, Merritt has cut into the deficit. Now they are only down by five. 301 left to go before we head off to halftime. And Perkins will go to the line and shoot a pair of free throws once again. This time she is going to miss the first. Mary on the night shooting uh, just, up, uh, just under 67%. That number will go down as they miss, as, uh, they miss both free throws there. Solano is shooting 62.5% from the free throw line tonight. Wilburn, nice extra pass. Amari Mason for three, and it's splashed down for Mason. Corner three. Big basket, well needed for the Falcons, as now they have an eight point lead. Marie, good ball movement. Dalasio, Marie in the corner. She's got Ibar and Wilburn on her. They're gonna call traveling. The handoff to Perkins, but about a second too late as Rojo was called for traveling. So that'll go to Solano. Wilburn, the inbound pass to Aaliyah Hayes as she is pushing the tempo and going right to her mid-range spot. She did miss. Amari Mason fighting for that board and coming up with another offensive rebound. 
Warburton potentially thought about the shot, but decides to pass it up. I borrow a nice little spin move and the, the up and under type move as she scores the basket. She's now up to seven points. I'll definitely take advantage of that all day. You got, some, got the size advantage. So. Yeah, Mary is a, a very solid rebounding team, but tonight Solano is just completely owning them on the glass as of now, 33 to 13. Make that 34 as Wilburn comes up with that rebound. And my favorite stat uh, about the rebounding department, Solano, 21 offensive rebounds, four for Merritt. As Solano does turn it over. Mason, they're on the defense. Oh, they're gonna call a foul. They're gonna call a foul. Coach yelling at Mason, what are you doing? I kind of agree with Coach there too, but hey, nothing easy. Nothing easy. Perkins gonna go to the line to shoot two. She just missed uh, both of them the last time. So not the worst foul in the world, but you know, Coach did kind of say something to Mason like, hey, what are you doing? I kind of agree with that, but again, definitely not the worst foul. Uh, quick substitution there as Ibarra is going to take a breather. And uh, Jaden Reed will come in, number 10. Minute 29 left to go. Perkins did make the first free throw. And she'll make the second. Bringing the lead down to eight. Falcons, 33. Cougars, 25. Mason turnover. Perkins, nice pass. And nice finish by Marie. Good defense, though, by Aaliyah Hayes. And oh, sloppy play, Marie. Steele missing the layup. Reed is going to come up with it, and she is trapped. Perkins, good defense, but it'll stay with Solano. Those are not the type of turnovers you want to be giving up, especially going into the half, because you know you're going to hear it from coach whether you have a lead or not. You're going to hear it either way. And substitution for Merritt. Kind of kind of sneaky. Noel is going to sub out. Garcia is going to check in. And my apologies. I believe they're going to call that over and back. I looked away for literally a blink of a second. So they're going to call that over and back. Another Solano turnover and another opportunity for Merritt as they are only down by six. And I'm sure they will want to cut into that deficit before going into the half. I would say for them, their best bet would be to get it to about, I mean, obviously you want to take the lead or tie it, but if you're down by any number, I'd say maybe three at most. Good paint, good post moves, excuse me, by Noel as she scores and another turnover. Reed is just constantly turning over the ball. As she keeps inbounding the ball, she's turning it over. Marie does get uh, called for the the travel as Garcia back in, Noel out. Coach Matt Bocher looking on in a little, he's, I'm sure he's upset and another turnover. Marie comes up with it. Or excuse me, that was Garcia that came up with it. Perkins air ball, Garcia air ball. Dallasio corralled that offensive rebound. 19 seconds left, about a Three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Merritt is down by four with a chance to go by down as little as one if they hit a three. Marie, free throw line jump shot is short. Same team, rebound Reed. Two seconds left. And not gonna be able to get a shot off. Solano will go into the half after a very sloppy second quarter, especially in the last, mm, I'd say about five minutes or so of this second quarter. Solano does have a 33 to 29 lead on the Cougars. We just kind of talked about the sloppiness in the last few minutes and all the turnovers. Kayla, what do you think Solano can do differently to kind of, obviously they have a lead, but maybe get ahead a little more. Obviously cut down the turnovers, that's an obvious, but what's something else you would say? Turnovers and just slowing it down. Don't, don't yeah. run down there and just shoot up a quick shot. You have all this time in the shot club left. Like, do some more smart passes, you know, you know communicate, and then go go to the basket, you know. Take advantage of that. Run them down. Just keep the energy high. But, you know, and also on the other side, don't, don't foul them. Like, play smart and just be aggressive. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, again, you fit 
all the nails on the head there. And then uh, for Merritt, you know, they started to kind of feed off the Solano turnovers. All I would say is just maybe kind of like Solano, there's times where they were going a little fast, just slow it down, run the offense. A lot of people kind of forget, you know, college level, 30 second shot clock compared to 24. That's mm. six seconds. Yeah. You can do a lap with six seconds. Exactly. So keep that in mind. So we'll be back for the second half of this one. Solano does have a 33 to 29 lead. However, they are doing it in sloppy fashion as Merritt is looking for their first win of the season. They are 0-11, and we'll be right back with the second half. Here, joined by D'Angelo Chapman and Jeremiah Cardwell, and on this very special edition of On Campus, I'm here with the Solano College basketball team. And I want to ask you guys first, how are you guys doing today? Doing good, doing good. Thank you. Thank doing you. good. So, both of you guys are freshmen this year, and I want to ask, how is it for you to be able to play through that COVID year that recently just passed from high school to from right now? Because I know that's like a huge gap, and that kind of affected your high school. Uh, play a little bit because you didn't really get to play that much. How did that affect you to now at Solano? Well, um, it affected me. I feel like the COVID year when it first happened, it was kind of crazy. It was like a struggle because next year, like from going to our junior year of high school, we didn't know if we were going to play or not. Right. And then they just pit us in like last minute out of nowhere. Everyone's trying to get their grades up, everything together. We're on, online, going to practices, wearing masks. So it was like a struggle kind of trying to manage everything at once. It was, a big, it was a big change. Mm -hmm. So how did that uh, COVID year affect you, Jeremiah? Um, I feel like it affected us, <coughs> well, me, because, mm, um, yeah, wearing masks, pulling up grades, and like, or keeping grades up, and yeah, focusing. Okay, okay. Well, both of you did go to Fairfield High School together, so, do you think that y'all brought a little bit of the chemistry over here to Solano? Like, did y'all have that, I guess, a bond, I guess you could say? And did that transfer over to here to how y'all play over here now? Yes, of course, yes, of course. I feel like um, it brought a big chemistry, actually, because uh, we have also our other teammate, uh, Ray, who plays with us, too, and all three of us went. And we just brought over here the way we play together, the way we play, like, as a team. It affected a lot, I feel like. That's great, that's great. So hopefully we'll be able to see y'all, I guess, play more because both of y'all are freshmen. Is Ray a freshman as well? Yes. So all three of y'all are freshmen, so y'all will be back next year hopefully mm -hmm. and hopefully turn this season around because at the moment <laughs> it's not looking so well. <laughs> but I, just, I do have hope for y'all every time we come out of the game and hopefully y'all be able to bring it through. So I wanted to ask y'all, how is it playing here for Solano? Because it's a big step from high school basketball to college basketball, essentially. How is that college basketball level of play? Um, for me, I feel like it opened up a lot of things. Um, high school, I was like more like a knockdown three shooter, right. play defense, did I do? But here, it's like my whole role changed kind of. Now I'm like the woman to drive in the paint, attack, play more aggressive, score more, stuff like that. So it was like a a bigger difference. That's great. How about you, Jeremiah? How's the college play for you? The college, um, yeah. Can you repeat the question? Uh, how is um, here playing at Sloan? How's the like the difference from playing in high school to actually playing in college ball? Well, I feel like the difference is <coughs> just faster pace, and then it's like playing as a team too. 
That's good. That's good. So I also want to ask you guys, what do you want it to lead to after you're done playing basketball here at Solana? Are you going to keep playing for a four-year university, or <coughs> you want to actually get into a job or a career? Uh, I feel like it just depends for me if I get any O's. If I don't, then after this, I'm going to finish these two years, start my uh, fire academy stuff, because I want to be a firefighter. That's nice. I'm in fire, um, I start my EMT classes, my fire academy, and get into that right, as soon as possible. That's great. How about you, Jeremiah? Yeah, the same. If I could get any offers, I would be good. And then, if not, then I would want to be a sports journalist. Okay, okay. So maybe we'll see you here anytime soon, or is that a possibility? Anytime yeah, down the line? Probably. Probably. Okay, okay. Well, I want to thank you guys for being here. I know this is a big step out of your busy schedules of playing <laughs> basketball to be here, so I want to say thank you guys. And I want to say thank you for everyone for tuning in on this very special edition of On Campus. I'm your host, James Smith, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>
All right, we're here in the Solano College Sports Network Studio Control Room to show you some of the equipment that you can use as a student here at Solano Community College. And the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the production unit system that we use. It's made by New Tech, it's the TriCaster system. This system is used by every major network. So you come to Solano Community College, you're going to learn video production on the TriCaster unit so you'll be ready to go once you leave our program. You'll be trained on the same equipment that you would use in all of the major networks. You see the video production board here. We've got our speakers set up here. Here we've got our interface that you can use. So all kinds of equipment that you can use to be a professional in media production. Another great feature of our video production system, you'll be able to get training on the Allen and Heath audio board where you will learn the trade secrets for both radio and TV production. Here in the video editing suite, you will have access to Adobe Premiere and the entire Creative Cloud. If you can imagine it, you can create it right here in the Solano Community College TV studio. We have merged with Fairfield Cable Access and that gives you the opportunity to use the same TV equipment that they use to produce their shows on local TV here in Fairfield and that gives you the chance to also show your work on local TV. Welcome to this episode of On Campus. I'm your host, Colin Szymanski. We're here in the SCSN studio, and I'm joined by one of Solano Falcons basketball players, Abram Bennett. Abram, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Colin. Uh, it's lovely to be in the studio, have an interview with you. It's, let's get going. It's going to be great, man. So just to start, what is, what was the, what brought you here to Solano? Like, what drove you to come here and play basketball for us this year? Well, I was just looking for a place to play basketball because I've been playing with some D1 and D2 players and playing really well. Looking, really made me realize I got to go play somewhere mm -hmm. and try to get some film and then I can go do some more stuff with it. Mm -hmm. So, started sending emails. All right, and we are back as the second half is just about to start right about now. Again, just a quick refresher. Solano does have a 33-29 to 29 lead, even though they have uh, been playing some sloppy basketball, especially towards the end 
of that first half. Solano shooting an abysmal 31% from the field. Merritt shooting 32, and the three-point uh, percentages aren't good for both teams either, both shooting 14.3. Blake Molina, Caleb O'Mell, back with you on the call as we have another half of women's basketball underway. Jay Dixon down low to Ibarra. Little pump move there. Rebound, Mason again. Another offensive rebound. That's our 12th rebound of the game. Ibarra, the slow running layup is short. I forgot to mention before the half, Mason is on double-double uh, watch. She has nine points and 12 boards currently. Ibarra will get that rebound. Jay Dixon is going to push up to Amari Mason for her. Nope, nice pass there. Ibarra, top of the key. 20 seconds on the shot clock. And off Mason, nice screen by Ibarra. Mason pulls the three, so now she has that double-double. 12 and 12 currently right now as she nets the three. She's on fire. Yeah, she's been kind of doing everything. She's been phenomenal tonight. Marujo, she's been good for the Cougars tonight, their best player. As she passes in the corner to Perkins, nice defense by Mason. Perkins was driving it. It's gonna, it's gonna hit off her knee, but it's gonna stay with the Cougars. Oh no! Excuse me. That is Solano. Oh, what's going on? Yeah, nobody knows what the call is. Excuse me. It is Cougar ball. I like the announcer thought it was Solano ball. That's my apologies. Mason, another rebound, and she's gonna push it all the way. And that should have been a foul. Nonetheless, no call there. Mason scores. 38-29. The Lady Falcons do have the lead. Rojo is going to facilitate this struggling offense. Both teams struggling on offense. Solano does have the comfortable lead. Looks like it went off the foot of Aliyah Hayes, but they did not call it. Rojo will get the ball back as she calls for a screen by Delisario. For four seconds on the shot clock. Perkins, wow. I don't think she called bank, <laughs> but the bank nonetheless is open. Still open. Great shot, nonetheless. Nice pass up to Hayes, who finds a Barra down low and is partially blocked. She actually probably, she actually thought she got fouled. Noel, good defense from her. Morojo, a little sidestep three short. Mason, another rebound. Man, she is a machine on the boards. And Aliyah Hayes, very slow, sloppy pass there, Morojo. Corrals it. Pass Mason. Floater is really short. Believe it might have been tipped by Ibarra. Not 100%. Good defense from Perkins as it'll stay with Solano. Solano's trying to get the fast break points and then they end up turning it over with the slow. Yeah, kind of the same song and dance we saw uh, in the first half, especially in that second quarter. I mean, those. Solano. And Morojo is out, and Raquel Higgs is in. Ibarra with the score. That gives Solano an eight-point lead as they go up now 40-32. 7-10 left to go in the third. And right now we'll go over some of the players showing out for their represented squads on the Merritt side. Perkins has been getting it done from the free throw line. Eight of 12 from the line. She does have 11 points, one rebound, one of five from the field. Morojo is struggling from the field, but still having a decent outing. Nine points, four rebounds, two assists. She is, only, she is shooting two of 10 from the field, one of five from three, but again, the free throw line, four of five from there, so. Got to stop Merritt from getting to the line. And for Solano, of course, we've been kind of talking about her because she's been off to a hot start to start the half. Amari Mason right now leading all scores with 14 points and leading all rebounders with, you guessed it, 14 rebounds. Ibarra right behind her with nine points and three boards. Stutter step, three. Nothing but net from Raquel Higgs. They may need to change the net after that three. Yeah, Jade got, Dixon. We got a lot of three-pointers falling after the second half. Looks like they got their legs some rest, and now they're hitting it. 
I'm, hey, I was a I was a shooter growing up, so I'm okay with a three point shootout, whether okay. it's one team or another. I'm cool <laughs> with it. I'm here for it. Exactly. So, me too. All right, five point lead as Merritt will corral the ball. Solano with another turnover. 6:25 left to go. We still got a whole another quarter of play, so keep that in mind. It is still anybody's game. Solano nine and six. The, the better team, Merritt, is 0 of 11, but showing heart and fight tonight Absolutely. as they are looking for their first win of the season. Nice pass right before the shot clock, but it is short from the well. That foul is called on Jayla Marie, her third foul of the game, and Sano will take it right back out of bounds as Jay Dixon will bring it up. Julia Wright, top of the key. Good defense. And put it up right away, but it is gonna go the other direction as it'll end up in the hands of the Merritt Cougars. Jayla Marie out. Lindsay Morohu in for the Cougars as Perkins will bring up the ball. So right now for Merritt, it is Perkins, Morojo, Noel, Higgs, Short, nice rebound by Delisio, who I was just getting ready to mention is also out on the floor for Merritt, and then she's, oh no, they were gonna fight for it, excuse, a jump ball, excuse me, so it'll be Solano ball. Solano's gonna make a couple of substitutions before I set the lineups for him. So Ibarra and Aaliyah Hayes out, Jervis, Sonny and Wilburn in. They join Jay Dixon, Julia Wright, and number 20, Amari Mason. Jay Dixon will bring up the ball. Wilburn, top of the key, Julia Wright, Morohu on her. Jay Dixon with Perkins on her. And good aggressive take, but runs into a couple of Cougar defenders, that foul is gonna go on number 20, Noel. So Dixon will go to the line and shoot two. Her first free throws of the game. And these are, this is actually potentially her first points of the game. She makes the first one. She has every other stat. She has four assists and five rebounds, but just got her first point. A little strong on that free throw, one of two from the line. 41-30 flee. Five minutes left to go in this one. Perkins, high arcing three. This time I don't think the bank was open. Dixon and Morejo fighting. Jump ball, it's gonna stay with Merritt. Stay with Merritt. They're gonna up the potential wet spot, slippery spots, so nobody falls. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Rojo inbounding the ball with right. That should be five seconds. Just got it off in time, potentially. Gervasani gets the steal. And Raquel Higgs playing some really good uh, pressure defense on her. Mason, Wilburn, top of the key. Wilburn thought about passing to Jay Dixon and is instead blocked by Noel. So Merritt will retake possession as Morojo is gonna bring up the ball. Hand off to Perkins. Back to Morojo, Jay Dixon on her. Good ball movement. Nice pump fake by Raquel Higgs to pull the mid-range. Short, Mason, another rebound. Nice pass up court to Jay Dixon. Nice pass to Julia Wright. Gervasani, three-pointers, good. Nice pass, nice passing all around from the Falcons. Gervasani will end up with the three ball. 44-35, Solano up by nine. Just under four minutes to go in the third. And they're gonna call a bull, a foul on Gervasani. And the game for the Falcons, number 11, Aaliyah Hayes. 
Aaliyah Hayes checking in. Julia Wright is going to come out and get a rest. Perkins, running floater. Nobody was defending her, so lucky she missed. It'll come up to the hands of Solano. Mason all the way. Nice pass and rebound from Wilburn from the from the top. And Solano now kind of let, like you said, kind of letting them play this yeah. time around. But mm -hmm. I really love the pace of this yeah. game for both teams. Yeah. Even though Solano is getting, you know, kind of itching close to potentially a blowout win if they keep it within double digits, mm -hmm. but still Merritt's pace uh, to me has been impressive keeping up with Solano. Definitely, there hasn't been as many foul calls uh, this third quarter. Merritt's playing excellent defense down there. They're making it tough on him. So like, by the way, you wouldn't know that they were an 11 team just, just by how this game has gone, you know? Yeah. Even with their stuff, they're, they're making it tough on Solano. So still a very close game. So see how the rest of the three minutes play out. Yeah. and. Uh, you know, for uh, one more thing I want to talk about with Merritt's defense. Again, I know they're down 11, so maybe, you know, their defense isn't as stellar as it should be or needs to be. But, you know, one thing I've been uh, liking is they really give you full court, you know, pressure on defense. And I, I'm always a fan of that, even, you know, right up, you know, meet them right up at the half court line. Yeah. As like my old uh, eighth grade coach used to say, if you don't want a full quarter, you get beat, yeah. just go right, meet them up in the middle and, uh, you know, Merritt's been doing that. They've just, yeah. you know, Solano's just been kind of working around them in yeah. a way. They've forced a lot of turnovers. So yeah. You can definitely tell. All right, and Merritt, after the timeout, has possession of the ball. Rojo. Nice move. Getting past a couple Solano defenders. Mason does get another rebound, but she loses it. Wilburn, good defense there. But... Could not stop Delisio from the little floater as she brings down the lead to nine. Jay Dixon calling for Aaliyah Hayes. Little handoff there. Thought about the screen. Aaliyah Hayes, too strong. Too strong. Merritt's pushing. Morojo. Little stutter step move. Thought about a step back from the free throw line. Back out to Perkins. Higgs. Three-pointer on the way. Short there. Rebound, Jay Dixon. Pushing the tempo. Nice bounce pass and nice finish by Amari Mason, who on the night now has 18 points. And I am not making up this next stat. 17 rebounds. A huge double-double, and it is only going to grow going forward. 2.12 left to go in the third. Re uh, excuse me, turnover, Merritt into the hands of Jay Dixon. Handoff to Aaliyah Hayes. That's mostly money, but everybody misses every once in a while. Short on the mid-range jump shot. Raquel Higgs, two-pointer. Someone left the door open. Aaliyah Hayes, rebound, pushing it. Pass the defender, nice move, Aaliyah Hayes. Nice finish. And timeout is going to go to Merritt as they are now down by 13. This is the largest uh, deficit of the game. Before that, it was Solano had a lar Solano's largest lead was uh, 11. So now we are in the double-digit range of 13, and if Solano makes a few more baskets and plays good defense. Merritt could be uh, in some trouble but still plenty of time left to go. We do have a whole nother quarter and we still have a minute 43 left to go in the third. Both teams in the huddle. Coach talking it up with the Falcons. I'm sure some part of that conversation is stop turning over the ball. <laughs> what would you say to, to Merritt as the coach? What would you, how, do you, how do you get back into this? How do you cut that? As Merritt's coach? Yeah. You know what? I would just tell him kind of just keep up the intensity on defense. maybe up the intensity a little bit. Obviously, the offensive struggles are there, yeah. not only for Merritt, but for Solano. But yeah. Solano's just been kind of coming up with it a little more. So for Merritt, I would just say take better take better shots and just hope, you know, shots, shots start shot, to fall. Shot selection, yeah. Yeah, shot selection. Very well said. Solano comes up with it. Wilburn, Ibarra. Aliyah Hayes, Wilburn. Handoff. Jade Dixon. Nice ball movement. Right now from Solano. 
Ibarra, little spin move, just a little short there. And uh, excuse me, Ibarra checked in on the last whistle for Amari Mason. That is gonna be a turnover by Jayla Marie for Merritt. And that'll go right back to Solano. That's another Solano substitution. Julia Wright's gonna check in for Aliyah Hayes. And Jada Reed is checking in for Wilmer. So a quick swap. Merritt has also now made some subs and has gone to their, their bench. The only starter out there right now is Morojo. As Gervasani thought about a three, short, rebound, Reed, and she is gonna be fouled by Garcia. So Reed will go to the line to shoot a pair of free throws. So for Merritt, say ciao, Moreau. Morojo, Hamilton, Marie, and Garcia. And for the Falcons, Dixon, Reed, Wright, Gervasani, and Ibarra will more than likely close out this third quarter as there's only about 49 seconds left to go. Solano has now a 14-point lead, 51 to 37, as Merritt has been in a little offensive drought. See what they can do here. Say chow, top of the key with Gervasani on her. Morojo is attracting a double team. Garcia, catch and shoot. It's gonna stay with Merritt as I guess Julia Rice hit it out of bounds. Her and number five, Rebecca Hamilton, were battling for the rebound. Another substitution for Merritt. Garcia out. Noel in. Morojo is going to take it out. Noel with Ibarra on her, turns it over Reed. Into the hands, should be an easy two. Oh, wow. It, no foul call, she got smacked. I heard that from here. And the booth is loud if you've been in the booth. Morojo, 12, or excuse me, 10 seconds left to go in the third, and then we head to the fourth and final quarter of this women's game. Morojo, three-pointer, good. A, little, a bit of a silencer. And that'll end the third quarter. Morojo get hitting the three right at the end there to cut the Solano lead down to 12, 52 to 40. And we still got one more quarter of play left. Yeah, still Merit, potentially anybody's game. Yeah, Mary needed that last three to bring in that energy to the floor. So still anybody's game. Big basket by Merritt. Um, and you know what? No, but, no one better to shoot it than Lindsay Morojo, who's now up to 12 points. She leads all the Cougar players in that department. Mm -hmm. Adria, per Adria, Adria Perkins, excuse me, is right behind her with 11 points. And Dalasio with eight points, four rebounds. Solano, we've kind of already talked about her quite a bit as she's having a monster potential career night. Amari Mason, number 20, 18 and 17. And for anyone wondering, she is just a freshman. So Solano Falcons, you are gonna enjoy this young lady for at least another season or two. I'm sure everyone's happy about that. Right behind her in the scoring department, Alea Abara, 9.4 boards. She's been battling down low. Julia Wright's kinda been quiet tonight. Seven points, three boards. She is shooting three of five. Kinda got it going in the first quarter. And then in the second corner, didn't do too much. And now in the third, again, not as much. She's just kind of, she's just kind of out there doing everything else besides, you know, scoring and stuff. I'd like to see her score a little more, but you know what? Sometimes you don't, you always don't need your best, one of your best scores to step up. Yeah. All righty, and we are gonna get this fourth quarter underway. Let's set the lineups for you to start. I'm pretty sure they're the same as when we ended, but we'll set them just in case. Just a moment. Julia Wright, nothing but net. Splashdown. As she must have heard me talking about her. I promise I was talking good about you, Julia. Not bad. I was just saying <laughs> shoot the ball a little more. She Sorry answered. about that. She answered. She answered. She answered, yeah. Julia Wright, she's a cool girl. Had a chance to interview her. Moreau short. Julia Wright. Rebound and she's gonna get fouled by Jayla Maru. 
Goes to help her out. Nice show of sportsmanship from Merritt there. So going back to it, let's start. Let's set, excuse me, the starting lineups for you as actually Merritt is uh, making a couple of subs. So Lindsay Morojo is out there. We got Say Chow out there as well. Julia Wright again. Almost same spot, same result. Just a little short, kind of rolled off the rim. Say Chow, nice move, but just couldn't finish. Rebecca, ha Rebecca Hamilton, offensive rebound. Another rebound for Hamilton as Noel was short there. Noel puts it up over Ibarra and scores the two. For the Solano side, we got Jay Dixon, Julia Wright, Jada Reed, Ali Ibarra, and Jervasani in there to start this fourth and final quarter of this game. Reed short on the free throw line. Just couldn't finish. Jervasani the rebound as they send the double and nobody paying attention to that ball. Reed and Aaliyah and Reed and Jay Dixon kind of got a little confused there. And we're going to see Solano make a pair of substitutions as Reed and Jervasani are out. Aaliyah Hayes, number 11, and number 20, Amari Mason. Going to check back in for Solano. Dixon. Julia Wright thought about the three. Instead, passes it to her teammate. Very unselfish, and what a result. Mason scores. Shot to a better shot. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I was just getting ready to say I would have shot that if, you know, they would have missed, but they didn't miss, so good job there. Mason gets tripped up. I, I don't know if they're going to credit her with that rebound. If she is credited with that rebound, though, she will be up to 18 rebounds and 20 points. I'm not sure if they will. As uh, Mason is shaking up a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to count that rebound, so... Mason right now, 20 points, 17 rebounds. My goodness. Have yourself a night, Miss Mason. Have yourself a night. I bought a little fake hesitation. Oh, could not finish there. Tough one. Tough one. Senchow was not paying attention as Perkins passed it up. That'll be a merit turnover, and Solano will take right back over. They do have their largest lead of the night currently, 57-42, a 15-point lead for the Falcons. We have about 7.50 left to go in the fourth end. Uh, pretty sure there was a timeout. Yes, there was. Oh, no, no, no. Excuse me. It was a ref... Yeah, okay, Merritt called the timeout. The referee signaled like she was calling her own time. I, my apologies, I was a little confused by that. So Merritt will take a quick timeout as they are down 15. Solano shooting, still not great, but shooting a little better, 34%. Uh, Merritt shooting 27. Uh, both teams really aren't shooting that well from three. Both teams are shooting just above 60% from the free throw line. and. The turnovers aren't too much better. Merritt has 20, Solano has 21. And one interesting stat, even though kind of doesn't add up on the scoreboard, Merritt points off turnovers 23 to Solano's 11. So you're up by about 12 points in the points off turnovers, but you're down 15. Don't know how that math really works, but unfortunately not the best. I will say Merritt uh, is really Shot block in seven blocks compared to Solano's two. 13 steals compared to Solano. Going as Aaliyah Hayes will make the jump shot, increasing Solano's lead. Top of the key, Noel to Morojo. Perkins with Aaliyah Hayes on her. And jump ball, okay. Uh, there was a number of calls there. I would have called a travel. I would have called a regular foul before a jump ball, but. Nonetheless, Merritt will inbound the ball. Rojo inbounded it in. 
Back to her, three-pointer is too strong. That's gonna be Noel cleaning up the glass. Nice defense from Wilmer as she'll crowd the board and bring it up herself. And off, Amari Mason. Mason, Aaliyah Hayes, good ball movement from Solano. Julia Wright, nice move and nice finish. Julia Wright. Dug in her bag a little bit for that little turnaround. Nice move. Good defense from Wilmer. And good save by Mason into the hands of Julia Wright. And all the way, just too strong. Good defense also from Mara, but too strong. Mason, another rebound. That is rebound number 18 for her as Jay Dixon will direct traffic. Four, uh, excuse me, 12 seconds on the shot clock. Wilburn. Got blocked there, so nine seconds left as Solana will inbound it under the basket. Jay Dixon, look for the inbounder. And, oh, oh Wilburn, straight, packed. Wow, I haven't said packed in <laughs> so many years. I just kind of realized that as that came out of my mouth. My goodness, it's been a minute since I've said that. Six seconds on the shot clock. Jay Dixon's gonna inbound. Almost got the five seconds. Four, Wilburn throws it up and oh, makes it! The good. prayer, <laughs> the prayer was answered. And Solano now has a 21 point lead. 63, 42, 6, 0, 5. Left to go in this one. Merritt missing the board as Wilburn and Wright collide with each other. Nice pass by uh, Mason to Aaliyah Hayes who was stuffed by Perkins as she pushes it all the way and she gets blocked. So if they're gonna give that to someone, I would imagine that block will go to Wilburn. Ibarra is gonna check in for Julia Wright. Jayla Marie's also gonna check in. She'll check in for Rebecca Hamilton. And then Jada Reed is gonna check in for Kamani Wilburn, who's Wilburn who's been Given uh, the Falcons some great quality minutes off the bench, rebounding, uh, the physical paint presence, and, uh, and the prayer that was answered as we just saw moments ago. Deep, uh, nice defense by Mason, comes up with a block. Pushes it herself to Reed, and Reed almost another turnover. Jay Dixon cannot get that one to go as it bounces around. That foul is going to be on Reed. Foul is number 10, Falcons for second. Inbound here, Jayla Marie will bring up the ball for the Cougars. Last touch, Ibarra, 20 sec 26 seconds on the shot clock. I, what a shot, that's all I can say about that. Um, what a shot from Merritt. I don't even know how to describe that. Delisio with the shot of the night, I guess. I, I don't know how to say it, but it does count for two regardless. 63-42, Solano still has a commanding lead as this game is winding down. Jake Dixon, nice take with the lefty left. And Merritt seems just a little bit gassed as they were bringing up the ball, or at least Lindsay Morojo is a little gassed, and I don't blame her. She's been kind of everywhere tonight. Turnover, sloppy, sloppy turnover by her as Reed will take it herself, and she is going to get blocked by Perkins. We haven't had that many fouls in the last half of this, but Solano's just killing him in the paint right now. We're Absolutely. Getting all the layups they want. They're they're being, they're making, they're taking smart shots. They're not rushing it. With, you know, you know, I'm one for, I'm one of those guys. Let them play to a degree. But, you know, yeah, I agree. Very little to almost no really whistles. Yeah. Um, Solano's offense has been clicking. You just, 
you know, everything's just going their way. Yeah. And, you know, I do feel for Merritt a little bit just in the fact that they're really not playing bad basketball. Yeah. It's just things are going their way for Solano, yeah. and they just really can't get a shot to really fall right now. Yeah. So, you know, nothing to – I mean, you know, it's a tough loss, and they're still looking for their – first win of the season mm -hmm. but I really wouldn't if I'm the Merrick coach I really wouldn't be too hard on this team no. you know depending on, even you know depending on what the final score is I mean they've they've shown they could you know they've shown they can play they're just not a team that's there you know what I mean yeah. and Solano does not come up with it they had two uh, chances at some points they did not corral those points so Perkins will come up with it and try to do a spin move. That move a few times and she either gets contributor when she is on. Ibarra, fearsome block. That was on Perkins. Good defense. No, and Amari Mason has had a killer night. That says a lot for the score difference as well. You know, she's been on fire tonight. 20 and 20 tonight. 20 and 20. That's incredible.
All right, hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, if you stayed with us for our last broadcast, the women's team, the Falcons just beat the Merritt Cougars by a whopping 25 points. Amari Mason had a 20 and 20 game, uh, but we still have one more game left to play tonight on our broadcast as the men's are gonna suit up now and play. The Solano Falcons taking on the Merritt Cougars. Again, my name is Blake Molina. Um, I've sound familiar and you've heard me probably for a while now. I'm joined now by Holden Beers joining me for the first time this semester and in the booth in general. Holden, welcome. Thank you for having me. All right, so we're gonna kind of go into this one quick. Talk to me a little bit about Merritt. Um, so Merritt right now is about four and 10 and they're more post heavy uh, team. They get a lot of rebounds per game and in their one conference game they've had, they dominated by 20 points with the win. Over their last six, they're about three and three though. Kind of been heating up over the season and their main player is number 13, Kaomi Wilson, averaging 14 points per, per game and seven rebounds. Again, they're a very tall and lengthy team. They want to get down in the post and get some layups and draw some fouls. Not a very heavy three-point shooting team, only averaging 15 three-point attempts per game. So what Solano needs to do is force them out to the outside and force some three-point attempts. Yeah, and speaking of Solano, uh, not probably having the season they thought. Uh, they're 2-12 and 12, uh, overall. They're on a four-game uh, losing streak. Uh, actually, oddly enough, their last win was our last broadcast here on the Solano College Sports Network on December 14th against Kasumas Rivers. They won 82-74, to uh, but since then, it's just been, unfortunately, uh, L after L, four-game losing streak, and they've been losing by, you know, I'm not really the best at math, but 15 points is probably a well-said average. And we are underway as tip-off has commenced, and Merritt takes control. So we have started this one. This is our final game of a doubleheader, and Merritt starting off strong with the three. That is number 24. Josh Palmer. For Solano, Justice Wilson. For the Falcons was named your Solano College Male Athlete of the Month for the month of December. Well done, Mr. Wilson. We hope you have a good game tonight as you're sporting a new headband. Samo, deep three. That is his range, but just short right there. Yeah, I like that new hairstyle, too, on Justice. Yeah, I, you know what? It I just suits him well, yeah. Yeah, it does. I kind of just noticed that, too, with the headband going. Yeah, whole new kind of look for Mr. Wilson. I'm here for it. Turnover merit. Solano will come up with it. So let's set the lineups for you for Solano. I got D'Angelo Chapman, Mr. Wilson, as we've been talking about. Number three, Jaquez Jones, the sophomore. Uh, Samo, another sophomore, number 10. And number 23, Jeremiah Cardwell. Samo, once again a three. Too strong. Again, rebound Merritt, and for Merritt, Nahom Sahay, number 13, Kamani Laddie, who Holden mentioned, and he turns it over right there. Number 14, Will Comer Ford, number 21, Mohamed Aziz, and number 24, Josh Palmer, who sank the three to start this game off. Yeah, it looks like Merritt's got number 14, Comer Ford, uh, guarding up on Wilson to start the game which is an interesting matchup because he is a more lengthy and taller guard than Wilson. So I think they like that matchup, uh, Merritt does. Yeah, hey, I like uh, Merritt for kind of thinking outside the box on the defensive end. It shows they've kind of done their homework. Jaquise Jones, a very kind of tough, tough floater. And Merritt's pushing. Landy, high arcing three is short. Rebound, Merritt. It's gonna stay with Merritt. Will Coleman Ford got the offensive rebound. But uh, Aziz, Mohamed Aziz, number 21, could not fit, uh, hold on to it, but it will stay Merritt basketball. Yeah, Merritt's going to really have to dominate the boards against Solano this game, especially with the size difference, to really you know get ahead in this game and get their fifth one of the season. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think one key for Solano tonight is uh, they, rank, they rank ninth in three-point attempts and 10th uh, in overall field goal attempts. Um, Nothing wrong with that. I have no issue with chucking up shots as long as they're good shots and they're falling. So hopefully Solano keeps up with that pace and those shots start to fall. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Solano was playing excellent defense, and someone left the door open. 
Yep, they're doing exactly what they need to do. Force them to the outside and make them shoot threes, which is what they don't like to do. Yeah, and uh, yep, they're going to call that a charge. So some one-on-one -on -one action, literally, and I mean number one to number one as D'Angelo Chapman will be called for the foul, or for the charge, excuse me, on Nahom Sahay. Sahay took the charge there. And a very quick substitution, Will Comerford. Comerford, excuse me, is out. Excuse me, Eli, uh, Eli Hicks is in. Sorry about that, folks. All right, Hicks. Getting some run early, Landy. Good ball movement by Merritt. Joshua Palmer. Back to Hicks. Tough finish. G gets his own board over Cardwell, and he still gets his own board. Fighting early as Hicks. Mohamed Zid missed. Another one. Man, they were letting him play for a while. Yeah. I believe Hicks grabbed three rebounds, and that, I mean, he just checked in not even yeah. 30 seconds ago, and he already has three boards. I like the effort off the bench for from him. Like already coming in and getting three offensive rebounds and trying to just get a get a shot in, you know. Yeah, we're uh, yeah doing well so far. Just couldn't finish, but uh, Hicks will get called for that uh, foul, and they make a, a quick substitution as Mohammed is is out. And coming in for the Cougars is number ten, Lucas Thorgood. I like that name. Ooh. Wow, what a block by Landy. Yeah, that's what he does. He's very lengthy. He gets those rebounds. He gets those blocks in the post. Solano's got to kick out to three point. I, I know they have a very bat mid field goal percentage from the th three point line, but they got to get out there and get get out from away from the post. Yeah, turnover there. D'Angelo Chapman causing the turnover on Hicks, so it'll go to Solano. Solano still hasn't put any. Points on the board. Merritt is up three to zero. Inbound pass to Wilson. Merritt one of seven from the field. Solano 0 of four. Wilson will step back. Yeah, why not? Yeah, they they took 14 out and he got the matchup he wanted at the three point line. He just took it and shot and that's what Wilson does. Yeah, straight cash there. As actually that's going to be rolled a two because Wilson was uh, foot was on the line. Excuse me, but he'll get it back himself. Missing, whoa, same team, Jaquez Jones and <laughs> Wilson there. Chapman, offensive rebound, putback is good. And wow, Merritt's already calling a quick timeout. I mean, they're only down one, one point. I yeah. mean, we just started this game. Yeah. Coach is obviously really, really upset about something. But uh, last couple possessions for Solano went well on the offensive end, the defensive end. Uh, a little shaky, but nonetheless, I mean, very, still very early in this game. Yeah, I mean, Mary, I think the coaches are just unhappy about how their offense is going. I mean, they're one for seven from the field, and they're being forced to shoot three-pointers. Already shot three three-pointers and only made one of them, and it was only the the only shot they made was that three-pointer, and it was a wide-open three. But I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the right call. Charging call. So hey, is gonna take another charge. She's already taken two in this game. Yeah, I mean, on that last possession for Mary, it just seemed like nothing could, could go in. Those layups, and then ladies dunk, he was wide open, oh, and he just misses it. I, and that would have been an emphatic tomahawk yeah. slam, too, but he did miss. Quick substitutions for Solano. Wilson and Elliot getting well-deserved rest. Checking it back in is Jackie Jones, number three, and number zero, the freshman, Mr. Trey Knight, who I've grown fond of. He's been one of those guys that, wow. That's a good foul by Cardwell, but if that was clean, that would have been a nasty block. Anyways, let me go back to Trey Knight for just a quick sec. A freshman I've been very impressed with. He gets, uh, how do I say it, kind of scattered minutes, I guess. You know, there's times where he's in the rotation. There's other times where he's maybe only getting, like, you know, five minutes of yeah. play, you know. But in those, what I'm trying to lead up to is in those minutes and that time as a freshman player trying to prove yourself to the coach to get you more run or maybe even move into the starting lineup for next year. You know, you never know. Yeah. He shows that, and especially if his three-point shot stays consistent, he'll definitely have a spot in the rotation. And you know, potentially, if the skills come around, you know, we could see this guy in the starting lineup. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me in the future. Yeah, I mean, for he's got the skill set and the potential. It's there. For a freshman, I like his effort whenever he's in exactly. it. Exactly. And on, especially on the defensive end, when he's on ball on the yeah. perimeter, he's a very good defender. And he's a smaller player he's too. He's a smaller guard. Yes. Yeah, I like that too. Exactly. 
Also checking in for the first time, number four, Miles Gunter. We had these guys, uh, they came through for media day back in the start of December, towards the end of November. And these are all, you know, they're good basketball players too, but overall personalities in. Oh, Jaquise Jones just missing that. And Trey Knight is there to help Gunter. Knight for three! Short, good shot though. Jaquise Jones fighting with Comer Ford. And that's gonna stay with Solano. Like I was saying, these guys are good basketball players, but they're great guys off the court. Talked to some of them, they joined. Uh, Miles, Gunter, and uh, Wilson kind of jumped into one of our sports conversations and they were speaking good points. You know, these are this is a, a good group of guys from a player standpoint and personality standpoint. And that, to me, is the kind of team you want to have. Yeah, I mean, Solano is really battling Merritt on the boards right now, especially with the size difference. Especially on the, they're getting offensive rebounds off of, that, that was two offensive rebounds on that last possession for them. And and Knight was, he, he caused one of those offensive rebounds, which I liked. It goes to the effort we were talking about about him. They're going to call that foul and say, hey, Gunter kind of gave him a bit of an elbow, and I believe, yes, he's going to go to the line to shoot uh, two. Yeah, and Holton, you were talking about the offensive, uh, the rebounding in general for both teams, but the offensive rebound for Solano. Solano's actually losing that battle 8-6. to six. It's only a differential of 2, nothing crazy. But uh, the in the shoulder rebound department, Merritt is actually leading that department with 18, Solano with 15, so it might not look like it, but Merritt is... Kind of keeping up with Solano with defensive uh, statistics. It's their offense that's struggling. They're currently shooting 15% from the field, 3 of 19 overall, 1 of 4 from 3. As Solano shooting 31%, 1 of 9 for 3. So I'm sure both teams will want to raise those shooting percentages. Both free throws are good by Miles Gunther, and Solano has an 8-point lead, 19 to 11, 7, 40, left to go in this first half, but stay with us. We have a whole another half of basketball to play. Lady, Jaquise Jones on him. This is kind of a mismatch if you're Lady, or maybe not. Jaquise Jones picking some pockets. Samo's gonna push the tempo a little bit. I like that, slow it down. Very smart. Slow it down, let Jaquise Jones kind of run the offense. Yeah. Lady, oh, Samo, I, mm, if I'm the coach, I'm yelling at you. Yeah, it's going to be hard <laughs> to run a fast break against against this team. It's smart by Samo right there to just stop and let the offense come together. And he's going to, yeah, he's going to get the foul call. Nice take by Samo. It's going to be good, uh, yeah, nice. Nice move by Samo, and I yeah, it's gonna be one and one. Good, so he's gonna get a free throw and not a bounce. Free throw is good. Uh, Merit substitution say number one say hey out number two Nick Mangram checking in. Samo, both free throws are good. Lucky bounce slasher also. He increases Solano's lead to 10. Mangrim, Gunther on him. Gunther, that energizer bunny, so to speak, off the bench, whether it's offense or defense. Or, you know what, he can get loud too. Like, he won't, he doesn't talk like trash talk, but, you know, he's talking out there. He's yelling. You know what I mean? I like players like that. What a dunk by Jude Rockefeller. That was a nice pass by Lady there too. Yeah. Going towards out of balance, he just found him right in the post. The setup in the finish as Gunther the push off on Comer Ford. So that'll be a Solano turnover. Merritt will take over. Trey Knight is out. Wilson is right back in as the offense has struggled just a little bit since he's gone out. I think maybe, uh, I'm not a coach, but Maybe pulling Trey Knight a little too early. I would have maybe pulled someone else. That's just me, though. But anyways, we resume play here. Merritt, handoff lady. Samo on him. And nice, Samo's going nice to throw that foul. Yeah, nice indeed. And I, it looks like from where I was, uh, Samo took a shot yeah. to the face. And I'm glad he's OK. Yeah, right, right from lady's shoulder. Yeah, yeah the shoulder. He's all right, though. I mean, he's in that corner. He's ready to go. He's not grimacing. So nonetheless, Solano gets a crack at it. 
Yeah, I mean, Sam, Sam was a tough guy. Absolutely. He can take oh, of course, yeah. I, I've been, you know, he's been around for a, a couple seasons now. I, I know his, I know his game well, and he is a tough player, no doubt about it. Shaquise Jones thought about that shot. Gunther, good ball movement from Solano. Wilson, tough, difficult shot, and nope. Cardwell cannot save it. You like the hustle as always, though, by Mr. Cardwell, but couldn't save it. So Merritt will end up with it here. Coma Ford, inbounder to Nick Mangrim, who will orchestrate the show for the Panthers, or excuse me, the Cougars. I'd like to see if they keep Coma Ford on Wilson for, for the rest of the half to see if they want to keep that matchup, especially with how well Wilson has been playing. They're going to call Wilson for, uh, just this is just me, a ticky-tacky foul. So Comer Ford, Will Comer Ford will go to the line and shoot two. He will look for his first two points of the game. No good there. It was a one and one. Lucky break for Solano as they will bring it up slowly. Samo. Gunter, corner, decides to pull himself. Oh, in and out. And that has to be one of the most lopsided in and outs I've seen with my own eyes. Good passing. Another oh. missed dunk from Lady. That's two dunks, and he was wide open, like you said. And he had two hands on the ball two this time, hey. and he still missed. One of the old sayings I learned is two hands for safety, but I guess you need a more safety than that. Uh, Wilson working. Mangrum fell to the floor for a second. Number two, forgive me, I don't know what they actually called, but. It's almost like they're calling a flopping call on the guy that Wilson was posting up. I thought I just. It's kind of hard to hear with our headsets and the, the other noises around us. It almost seems like, I thought I just heard the announcer say delay of game. Hmm. If I heard that correctly. I, hey, three points for Solano. Let's just not complain about it, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Anyways, Solano is at the line, and they are going to get the ball right back. No, they're not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure a delay game is just one free throw, and then yeah. it it's goes to the other team's possession. I was just, I guess I was just a little confused on the delay yeah, of game call. Yeah, that's a very rare call. Missed it, yeah. I mean, in basketball, it's a rare call, yeah. I, anyways, nonetheless, we're going to move on. 4.45 left to go in this first half. Solano does have... A nine-point lead. Another one and one. I believe that one's going to be on. I think it was on Gunter when yeah. he was, he was uh, guarding uh, Lady. Yeah. So Lady, chance. It's a one and one. If he makes it, another free throw. If he misses, it is live. He'll make the first. Lady makes them both. He seems pretty automatic from the free throw line. You know what? I think besides the few misses we've seen, I, I mean, he kind of looks like he has a pretty good skill set. I, I, I think he's pretty automatic in general. Yeah. Nonetheless, Wilson. To finish. Gets the lucky nice roll and the bounce for the score. Tough finish, but I mean, that's just, things have been going his way. He's now up to 13 points, and he has scored just as many points as Merritt has scored. Merritt has 15 total points as a team. I mean, that's just a, what Wilson does. He finds a way to get a, get a shot he can take, and he just gets it in the bucket. Yep, absolutely. Wow, nice ball movement by Merritt. Almost a turnover, but they... Used some good ball movement. They just couldn't corral the shot. Comer Ford with a miss. Jaquise Jones got it and took it himself. Wilson will run the offense. 18 seconds left to go on the shot clock. I mean, despite the open three-pointer that Merritt had, I mean, Solano's playing a, doing a pretty good job on defense of keeping them on the outside and forcing them to take threes. Gunther, mid-range shot is no good. Oh, oh no. Oh, Wilson, no, no, no. Come on. 
I mean, Lady, if he made those two two dunks, he'd have 12 points right now. He's got eight, and yeah. I mean, I mean, I wouldn't like to say he's playing great with besides those two dunks, but he could have double-digit points right now before we go into half. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Solano's gonna make uh, some a plethora of substitutions. So, excuse me, Gunther, Whitaker, and Wilson are out. Ray Holt, Cardwell, and number 21, Matthew Elliott are in the game. They join Jaquise Jones and Samo. Merritt is making some subs as well. Nick Mangrim out. Sahay is back in. And yeah, the subs, okay. I was making sure that whistle was for the substitutions. And looks like some more Merit substitutions. Eli Hicks checking in for number 10, Lucas Thorga. Looks like Merritt's going to a full or like a half court press. Yeah, they're wor they're working and it's so uh, it works so far. Turnover. Yeah. By Merritt, Jackie Jones! Oh, he almost saved it. Lady! Good D by Jones. That was good effort. That was by great him. effort. I mean, he fell over the bench and came back and contested the shot. I mean, you know what? He had a hand on the ball, too. It was just one of those things where you played good defense and, it, and the shot just went in. I mean, nonetheless, Solano still has a 14 lead. As Jones, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Samo working out deep for Elliott to short. Or excuse me, too strong there. Rebound Cardwell gets blocked. Looked like he tripped over Elliot. Or uh, yeah, yeah he tripped over Elliot. Or excuse me, not Elliot Cardwell. I think I think Cardwell and Mohammed Aziz, number twenty-one for Merritt, kind of got tangled up there. And yeah, the refs are gonna talk about it and see if it was like intentional intentional tripping it didn't look intentional to me he was kind of on the ground after the the scuffle in the post and you he know was what just, they were on the fast break i think it was just an unintentional trip to me it just kind of happened kind of yeah. like one of those bang bang things like one minute i see cardwell on the ground the next i see lady on the ground mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i don't know what they're gonna call here but i mean i feel like nonetheless both teams lose out whoever wins the call Still waiting on the call. He's calling coach. Ref is calling. The coach is over. Uh, unless I missed something or there was some talking. I don't think it was this serious where we need to huddle the coaches yeah. and the referees. I mean, we're kind of just wasting time at this point. Unless, like, I missed some trash talking because we obviously can't hear. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't think it's that serious. Just yeah. assess some fouls or something and go from there. Yeah, I think they're just going to oh. give him a one and one Flagrant two. Wow, okay, so from what I have gathered, Cardwell has been ejected a flagrant two. I would assume it's for intentional tripping. I'm just going to go off that from what I saw. There might have been some words after. I'm not too sure. But flagrant two, he's out. Mohamed Ziz, number 21, is shooting the technical free throws. He missed the first and made the second. So without Cardwell, you lose some energy, you lose a big, you lose a rebounder. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do have Kimi on Whitaker, who is a lengthy, solid body. He's big, he gets bored, he can work in the paint. So, not, I mean, you are losing a lot because Cardwell is your energy guy, but you're replacing it with good energy as well. So hopefully for Solano, they can maybe use this as some fire and kind of say, let's win this one for Cardwell and pull out this dub. That Merritt was, has crept back though, they're only down four. Yeah, I mean that was a very aggressive call there by the refs to give him a flagrant two on a, yeah. it was almost an intentional trip. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't really agree with that one, but yeah. I, I, didn't, I wasn't there for any talking right there. Well, I mean, let, let's just say it was intentionally tripping. Let's say Cardwell decided to pull the ankle or whatever. I mean, 
Like, it didn't lead to nothing else. He didn't fall. To, it's not like Ziz got hurt or he fell super hard. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a dirty play. I'm not yeah. taking Clarkwell's yeah. side yeah. by any means. But I, I would have maybe given that a flagrant one with a technical or something. I mean, a flagrant two, it's a little harsh. I, I yeah. agree with you on that. But I do feel like, regardless, something did need to be called. Flagrant two, though, might be a little too much. Quick substitution for Solano. Matthew Elliott out, and the freshman, number zero, Trey Knight is in. We saw a little bit of Trey Knight to start uh, around the 10-minute mark, but he got subbed out rather quick. Ray Holt ran into a double. Trey Knight is open. Splash that young fella. Short on the three. Solano's threes are struggling. What a save and nice effort by Trey Knight. Whitaker gets up and puts it back. Nice ball movement. What Knight, a save and there Whitaker. by Knight. Yeah, what a save indeed uh, into the hands of Holt and then Holt with a nice dime from Whitaker. All three of those men deserve credit for that possession alone, even though Whitaker did finish. Good yeah. D2 by Solano. And Ziz, double. And three second violation. Mohamed Ziz is gonna be called for that one. Good defense there by Solano to keep him in the post and. There was no one open for that those three seconds, which caused the three-second violation. Yeah, game getting a little intense, even kind of before the Cardwell action. Barrett is only down as Jaquise Jones hits that midi. 28-22, Solano, that is his bread and butter. If I were to give anybody an A-plus shooting grade, it would be Jaquise Jones' mid-range shot, as that is automatic. Uh, they're going to call a foul. It's going to be on the floor. Well, that's what happens when Salon is going to beat the press. They're going to have guys and shooters open, which they have. They have good shooters on their team, and if they're going to be open, that's that's cash money every time. Yeah, and that foul is going to go on uh, number 11, Ray Holt, and uh, I do apologize. I thought it was on the floor. It's actually going to be free throws as both teams are in the bonus. And a minute and 18 seconds left in this very now intense, kind of high energetic first half. Solano was running away with it for a little bit, but Merritt has fought back and potentially the card, the Jeremiah Cardwell ejection uh, could have been the fuel they needed for them. One, one and one, but I believe they're, they're gonna call a foul on Ray Holt. Yeah, I think they're saying he pushed uh, Ziz off of him when Ziz was going for the rebound. Huh. Under, I mean, it's kind of one of those flip a coin things to go either way type of foul. Nonetheless, Mohamed Ziz, Ziz, number 21, is going to go to the line. He'll miss the first, but he'll get a chance at one more. Ball don't lie. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well said, my friend. Well said. Real shooting slumps. Uh, from three, Ziz goes one of two. Uh, Merritt is one of five, 20%. Solano, one of 12, 8.3% from three. Yikes, if I can say anything going into the half for both teams, work on the three-point percentage. And also for Merritt, I mean, they're getting to the free throw line a lot, but they are only 66% from the free throw line so far. I mean, if they are making some more free throws, they're right in this game, like, tied up or have the lead. Yeah, and I believe... Uh, yeah, there's some real extracurriculars and talking going on. I don't know if it's between players, like, jawing at each other, like both teams, or it's players jawing at the referees. I'm not sure what's going on. But the refs again. Solano takes a timeout. Again, the refs are huddling up, and they had to separate the teams for a second. I mean, it didn't look like any scuffles. But nonetheless, a minute and seven left in the half. Solano is up. 28 to 24, but the Merritt Cougars are hanging around and they're fighting. And I mean, I mean the shooting slumps kind of are the story here of the game. Yeah. I mean, Merritt is only down four, but they're shooting 21%, five of 23 from the field. Solano has the lead, but they're shooting just about 32%, 10 of 31. I mean, if you were to, if I was to look at these shooting stats and you were to ask me who's winning, I would say they'd be tied or nobody's winning. Yeah. You know? It's just one of those things. I mean, it's just also a great defensive game by both teams. I mean, Solano's forced 12 turnovers to, to Merritt, which is 
they average 16 a game, and and they're almost to that margin, and it's almost the end of the first yeah, half. We so and we have a whole other half to play. Yeah, uh, you were talking about the turnovers. Hold on, let me jump back into that conversation real quick. So you said uh, merit, 12 merit uh, in the turnover department. Jaquise Jones misses the free throw. I believe there was a technical, so he misses that one. Anyways, what I was going to say, Solano has 13 points off turnovers compared to Merritt's six, so that is kind of the deciding factor in their lead, along with some other things as well. Jaquise Jones goes one of two from the free throw line. Those were technical shots. I don't know exactly on who or what was going on, but nonetheless, Falcons get a chance at the ball. 29-24, a minute seven left. It's almost like they called a flagrant one on someone on merit. They, as he got, yeah. he got two free throws and they the, got the ball. Yeah, it must have been, again, just kind of, everything's kind of happening. Bang, bang with the, the fouls and the extracurricular activity. It's kind of hard to keep up sometimes. But yeah, it looks like that was the right, that was the call. Good knowledge, Mr. Holden. Samo, a tough turnaround mid-range. And it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna stay with Solano. Yeah, his foot was stepped out of bounds when he oh, was yeah. throwing it back in and tried to throw it off of Samo, which is a very, you know, smart basketball move, but he was already out of bounds, so yeah. it didn't even matter. Don't want, yeah, that's kind of overdoing it. Jaquise Jones. Oh, Samo wants that three, I know. Holt, three-pointer on the way, it's good. Splash down. Right, as Hicks was closing out on him, Ray Holt decided to say, that's my shot, I'm gonna take it. And he gives Solano. Yeah, that's what Solano needs to start doing is keep making those threes. I mean, they were only one of 12 from three. I mean, if they start hitting those, they're going to create a huge margin. Oh, they're going to run away with it yeah. if they start hitting their threes. Absolutely. 32-24, Solano has an eight-point lead. We have 24 seconds left in this first half, but stay with us after the first half. we got a whole other half to play, and we'll be right back to join you once this half is over. Hicks going to get the friendly roll and make the first free throw. Solano is going to call a timeout after the first uh, merit free throw. Kind of a late one for us. Usually we only do the one game. Now we're transitioning into those double headers. I know quite well from my, my time being in this class and in this program from my first semester to my, you know, this one. The double headers are long, they're bearing, and depending on the games, you never really know what could happen, but they're good for the experience, and they help you out, and they help all of us out in the way, so always good. And, you know, if you're taking the class looking for that grade, those hours come in handy as mm -hmm. well. Speaking of, if you are, classes haven't started just yet, but you can still sign up if you're interested in broadcasting, working behind a camera, technical stuff, uh, graphic design, or you just love sports and want to talk about it, add the salon, add, come join the Solano College Sports Network, add sports broadcasting. It should be uh, 75B is the class. If you want to add it with our professor, Greg Poff, the man in charge that runs the show. He's been doing a phenomenal job for many years. From the time I've been here, he's, you know, since I've joined, he's been very helpful. He's giving you criticism, good and bad. You know, he just wants to see you succeed, even though he'll be hard on you and stuff. He wants to see you succeed. So if you're interested in any of those things, please add the class and join. Always looking for new people. And you never know, you could be doing what I do or you could be working behind a camera, whatever you like. Holden, you've transitioned a little bit, mostly behind the camera last semester, going into this semester, yeah. maybe a little more in the booth, maybe you know, 50-50 camera booth, you never know. Yeah, I mean, I started the class at, behind the camera. I was a little, like, shy to get into the booth, but, like, now that I'm in the booth for the first time, I mean, I'm, I'm having a ball. I'm it's a fun. Yeah. Trey Knight missing that wide open. Had a rough night from three. Jaquise Jones coming up with a steal with nine seconds left. Solano 32-25. Four. Trey Knight. It's going to stay with Solano. 1.7 left. They I don't think they'll put any extra time left, but 1.7 can you can work with. It'll be out of bounds under the basket. Knight will inbound. They're going to bring him out around to the corner, and they're going to try to get him to 2-3. Yeah. Jones, a three at the buzzer! Oh, what a shot. What a shot. Wow, Jaquise Jones. 
three-pointer at the buzzer, and that's a good way to end the half if you're the Falcons. 35 to 25 is the score going into the half. Jaquise Jones making the three. But uh, it's been hit well, so that dynamic duo is playing well. Uh, Kamani Lady is the, high, the leading scorer for Merritt. He's up to 12 points, excuse me, 10 points as well. So we'll be right back for the start of the second half. Solano has a 35 to 25 lead over the Merritt Cougars after that awesome buzzer beater from Jaquise Jones. Stay with us, we'll be right back with the second half. What's up, y'all? This is Trey Knight. Thank you for watching the Solano College Sports Network. The exponential growth from the program from my first year to my third year now, that's what keeps me coming back and keeps me excited and just like fulfills me as a person. It's so impressive. And we, we, every time we walk in here, you guys are doing something different. It's, it's great. It's great. nothing but opportunities here, and we have sports to cover, we have the equipment. Because the more ambitious you are, the more opportunities you'll have. On the job training is, is huge. You get the hands on experience. When someone asks who can do it, you know, you can raise your hand and say I can do it, so. Joining a class is the best decision I ever made. Audrey Jones, Audrey for three, and it's good! With 1.3 seconds left on the game clock, Audrey Jones with one of the biggest shots ever. The sky's the limit, really, with what we can do here. College just got affordable. Up to 100% of enrollment fees can be reimbursed for first-time college students taking full-time classes. At Solano Community College, we are taking full advantage of this to further your future. With certificate and degree programs in industrial technology, aeronautics, biotechnology, and many others, Solano Community College is a staple for success. For more information, please contact the Financial Aid Office at 707-864-7000. Solano College Sports Network for another episode on campus. I am here with Hannah Del Rio, one of our Solano volleyball players. Would you like to tell us a bit, little bit about where you're from? Uh, I'm from Vacaville, California. Okay. Um, I've been here since I was little. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I played high school ball, mm -hmm. uh, middle school. I've started in seventh grade. Okay. So I've been playing for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, I played at Wilsey Wood. Wilsey Wood? Yeah. Okay. That's where you went to high school? Yeah, I went to Wilsey Wood High School okay. in Brackville. Did you like playing there? Uh, I did. I've had a few bad experiences there mm -hmm. with, like, coaches and yeah. stuff. It was not really the best. But yeah. Uh, overall, yeah, I did. Like, I made a lot of friends, and it that's was, like, good. fun. That, that's like, awesome. more of that aspect. Um, so you said you first started playing volleyball when you were in seventh grade. Yeah. So you're about, like, 12? Maybe yeah, eleven somewhere around there. Yeah. Eleven, twelve. What did you? What position did you play when you first started? Setter. You were a setter. <laughs> yeah, I was a setter. Okay, very yeah. interesting. Did but, you like doing that? Um, I 
wasn't good. <laughs> I was definitely on the second team. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had to work my way up there, but yeah, no, I was definitely not. Were you tall when you were younger too? Yeah, I was a little taller. Yeah, but uh, they just put me as setter. Like they're like, oh, you're a setter, and I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> yes. That's funny. So how long were you setter for until you started playing middle? Uh, I think they took me out eighth grade. <laughs> eighth grade, and then you started playing middle. Uh, yeah, I started playing like yeah, I played middle. Did grade. you like that better? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you no. still yeah, you still play that now. Yeah. Still play that now, and I you're happy with that. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. If you could play any position, is that the one you would pick? Mm, maybe libero. Okay. Oh, no. Passer. <laughs> I want to be a passer. <laughs> That's a dream. One day, one day. I love middle blocker, so. That's good. You're good at it, too. Um, so what made you start playing volleyball? My sister. Your sister. So my sister uh, played travel ball, mm -hmm. and I would always go to her games, and I was Aww. just like, that looks Star fun. Starstruck. <laughs> well, yeah, because I played, like, a couple of sports. Mm -hmm. So I tried them all, and I was like, I want to try volleyball, because she played, and I was like, that looks fun. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I started from her. She Aww. definitely was, like, the one person that, like, made me want to play. And your sister used to play here, right? Yeah, she played here before uh, a couple of years for me. Wow, and Co uh, Coach Darla was her coach, too? Yeah. That's so funny, <laughs> small world. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you enjoy about being on the Solano Falcons team? Uh, I think definitely uh, getting a lot of reps in. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to play a lot. Yeah. The friendships you make, that's yeah. my favorite part of volleyball. Mm -hmm. uh, having all the laughs with everyone like everyone just ever, like ever since like i came here we mm -hmm. all got along like yeah. <laughs> it was never like drama or anything yeah. like it was always like such a good team like that's my favorite part like having the friendships here yeah and then being able to like learn more and grow more in my position mm -hmm. uh coach darla knows like what she's talking about yeah she does yeah so it's definitely like helps me a lot in preparing me for a four-year and i like that's why i liked being here yeah that's awesome um what are some things that you'll always remember about this team? Like looking back on it or like from any other team, like what makes it different and what are some things that you'll remember? I think this, like the team I, we have right now mm -hmm. is will be the most like memorable for mm -hmm. me because uh, definitely like my favorite team I've been on. I'm close with like everyone on the team. Yeah. Like <laughs> we all like each other. Uh, we all have like our jokes. That's like something I'll always remember. Just any jokes that we have of like <laughs> yeah. maybe Erica calling the ball out when it was <laughs> so in and you're like, no, that was that was in. Oh, <laughs> or just like certain things of like when Coach Darley gets mad, we're all just like, okay, focus up. Like, <laughs> let's go guys, don't laugh. It's like, don't look at Erica, like, yeah. no. Um, just things like that. Like I think I definitely will stay in touch with like everyone on the team so yeah definitely. that's something like will be my favorite that's why i'm sad to leave but yeah yeah and you want to uh you want to keep playing right you want to go to a yeah. four year uh yeah, yeah. i want to go to a four year but uh, no snow no snow <laughs> no <laughs> that's not no <laughs> and not a place that's way too hot yeah because i don't want to like melt that's fair <laughs> especially in a gym practicing right no um, air conditioning that'd be crazy <laughs> <laughs> that would not be fun um is there anything that you could tell like your past self about vol what you know about volleyball now? Like anything that you know that you wish you knew when you were younger? Uh, definitely. Ooh, that's, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe like, I, like, I don't know. When I was little, I didn't think I would like go as far. I think, mm -hmm. oh, it's just like, it's just a sport. It's like, fun, yeah. It's fun, you know? But like, maybe like, oh, like you're really gonna get this far. You're really gonna go to four years. Yeah. You're gonna do all that. Probably just like, like preparing myself like I mean maybe take it more seriously because mm -hmm. I think when I was younger I took it seriously but not as seriously as yeah. I should have it's hard though to know like you don't yeah. know how far it's gonna get you or how yeah. you're gonna develop a love for it and be like wow like if I really took it seriously like a job when I was 12 yeah. you know where would I be now but yeah. it's a little unrealistic too because yeah. you gotta so be a kid and live your life and have fun yeah. figure figure things out um what what are some things that you love most about volleyball like certain game plays or what's your favorite play to run uh i think like running fast plays yeah i, I love the fast plays Me too. So just like hitting like around the blocker or mm -hmm. even blocking the ball and it goes straight down, straight down. those are my favorite <laughs> type of down. blocks yeah and yeah. then just like looking at them like yeah i just I blocked your that. ball like <laughs> What you gonna do now? I'll do it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Or if they block you, like, you wanna go harder in the next one, you're like, yeah, I'm not gonna let you block me again. Like, I'm gonna hit around you type thing. Just like, 
challenging yourself mm-hmm. like after they block you or something and you're just like no I got the next point yeah type thing like, don't worry about it <laughs> that's awesome are you excited tonight for sophomore night yeah I'm excited it's gonna be sad it's even though we're going sad. to playoffs and yeah. I get to play with you guys again it's gonna be sad because it's like our last conference it's bittersweet game. Yeah, yeah you know I'm gonna be sad but I think that we're gonna do good are you telling yourself anything before the, this game today like do you have any like thoughts before the gameplay or what do you want what's something you want to achieve in this game in particular you want to get blocks or some kills or uh maybe go for my my kill like my high your like, highest yeah your highest. record okay yeah, i think it's 17 right now yeah. so i want to maybe go for 18 20 oh yeah make it 20 make why it 20. not <laughs> double digits there you go yeah but just play my hardest uh for this last one and just make it a good one yeah awesome well thank you for joining us <laughs> Thank you for joining us here again on On Campus with our special guest, Hannah Del Rio. Hope to see you soon. Hi, my name is Eric Visser. I'm in my fifth year as the athletic director of Solano College. To experience community college and its mission has been an outstanding experience. Solano College has a very rich tradition in intercollegiate athletics dating back to 1947. I'm very proud to uh, communicate that that rich tradition is still being continued with fine young men and women that represent Solano College on and off the court. In the fall we have the volleyball program, we have a very successful women's soccer program, we have both men's and women's basketball, and then we transition to four programs, baseball, of softball, men's women's tennis, and men's and women's swimming. It is our mission to excel our programs and our student athletes in academics. All of our student athletes are committed to give back to the community. And we would invite you to be a part of Solano College Athletics by visiting our website, www.solanoathletics.com, and you feel a warm welcome at Solano. College just got affordable. Up to 100% of enrollment fees can be reimbursed for first-time college students taking full-time classes. At Solano Community College, we are taking full advantage of this to further your future. With certificate and degree programs in industrial technology, aeronautics, biotechnology, and many others, Solano Community College is a staple for success. For more information, please contact the Financial Aid Office at 707 864-7000. Welcome to TV 55. In this hands-on class at Solano Community College, you will learn all aspects of television production. How to use high-end cameras, lighting, and audio equipment in the field and right here in the studio. Whether you are looking at making better YouTube videos, educational or promotional segments, or finding your creative passion, enroll today. Get an art school education at the fraction of the cost. Visit us online at solano.edu. Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of On Campus here on the Solano College Sports Network. We're here in our studio in Fairfield, California today and we have a uh, special guest with us. We have Justice Armstrong Wilson, guard for the men's basketball team, the Solano Falcons. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule for this yeah. quick interview. Appreciate yeah. you being here. So let's just start with it. We'll jump right into it. What were your expectations going into this season, whether it was your own individual goals or if you had maybe some team goals, what were those expectations like? Uh, so this year is my freshman year. I'm a freshman year, first year here. So I'm coming from uh, Vannin High School. Mm -hmm. Last year I played one year at Vannin. I transferred to two, two, three different schools. Um, so I'm coming from Vannin, I'm a winning culture. So I was trying to come in here and make uh, 
make our team better as much as I can. And you know what I'm saying? Just go out there and hoop. That's that's what I'm here to do. So yeah, basically. Yeah, Vanden from you know my time when I went to Wood, but from the sports battles they've had, I know I went Alrighty, and we are back for the second and final half of this game. We are here on the Solano College Sports Network for some men's basketballs. The Solano Falcons are up 35 to 25 as they are as we are about to get the second half underway. Blake Molina joined by Holden Beers, first time in the booth. And Holden, I kind of forgot to ask you as we were ending the half, so I'll start off the half by asking you, what did you like in the second half from Solano in particular? Uh, I liked their aggressiveness on defense, especially on the fast when Merritt's on the fast break. I mean, Solano was very pesty, if, yes. say, if you want to say that. that. Is, by the way, perfect word. Forcing these 13 turnovers and getting points off the turnovers as well. The, their 10-point lead is strictly off of the their 10-point lead in the points off turnovers. And I think they just got to keep the aggressiveness going. and But back off just a little bit because Merritt is getting a lot of free throws. Granted, they're not making all of them. But still, Solano needs to just back off just a tiny bit. But keep that aggressiveness they, they have in pe pesty hands, say you will, if you want to say that. And, you know, just continue doing what they're doing. I mean, I like what they're doing. No, and I like use the word... Uh, right, and it's a good word, pesty pest. You know, yeah. that, that has been Solano's defense. I couldn't agree more. Oh, I thought Lady was getting the uh, alley-oop there. And it's going to be a merit turnover, so Solano will take over. Real quick, just a quick recap of what happened in the first half. Uh, not the whole first half, but Jeremiah Cardwell and number 21, Mohamed Ziz, got tangled up, and uh, they actually called a flagrant two on Jeremiah Cardwell ejecting him from the game for intentional tripping. So keep that in mind. Kimion Whitaker um, starting the uh, the second half in of Cardwell. And hard foul on number four or number twenty-four, excuse me, Joshua Palmer. And that was on number three. And that foul is gonna be called on number three, Jaquis. Jones. So we'll set the lineups for you real quick to start this half. Number three, Jaquise Jones. Uh, D'Angelo Chapman. Samo's in there, number 10. Kimion Whitaker, as we talked about, number 15, filling in for the ejected Jeremiah Cardwell. Palmer will make the first free throw and, of course, the star of the show tonight so far, number two, Justice Wilson. And for the Cougars, number one, Nahom Sahe, 13, Kamani Lady who is the leading scorer with 10 points for Merritt. Joshua Palmer, who was just shooting free throws as he makes both. Mohamed Aziz and number 14, Will Comerford, make up Merritt's starting five. Or excuse me, the lineup to start the half. Wilson, a three with a defender in his face. Short, Whitaker cannot get the rebound. Comerford comes up with it. Palmer is pushing. And they are going to call a blocking foul. That is going to go against Jaquise Jones. Oh, I'm sorry. Not against Jaquise Jones. Against number one, D'Angelo Chapman. Yeah, this is not what Solano wants to start the half right now. They already have three fouls in the first minute of the half. I mean, it's hard because Barrett is a very tall and lengthy team, like we've been saying. But like, w once again, I mean, Solano can play Pesty without fouling. And I think that's all they've got to do to, to keep this lead. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And uh, even though we just started the first half, like you just said, Holden, we have a quick Solano substitution. D'Angelo Chapman, number one, is going to take a quick seat potential, is going to take a seat. And number 11, Ray Holt, will check in. Turnover there from uh, Palmer, so Solano will... Bring, uh, take possession and bring up the ball. Wilson, out to Samo. Ray Holt, Jaquez Jones, top of the key. Good screen from Whitaker. Jones thought about the step back too. Samo. Gave him a little bit of elbow. Uh, I, I, I think Sahay flopped just a little bit in that, but nonetheless, Got to call it as you see it. So that'll be a Solano turnover. Merritt will take over. 
as we are just about two minutes into this second and final half. Again, thank you for joining us, whether you're joining us for the men's game or you've been with us since the women's game. We did have a double header tonight as the women's team did uh, was victorious against the Merritt team. A 21 point uh, win for the Lady Falcons. We'll see if Solano can come up with a W. Mohamed Ziz, nice little spin move in air as Whitaker was coming for the block and he missed it but finished. Interesting what Merritt's doing right now. They're keeping a kind of four out offense to keep their guys on the free throw line. Maybe trying to force Solano's defense to go on the outside and get someone open on the inside. Like right there, they had Ziz open on the inside and he got the layup. Travel on Wilson leads to, you guessed it, another Solano turnover. Comer Ford, number 14 for Merritt, was there to help with that turnover. Good pass by Palmer. Lady, three-pointer way too strong. What a good, good block. Comer Ford. Comer Ford. Tough, uh, tough finish and take. He did not finish. Wilson's going to push it. And... Wilson upset with that one. Sahay's going to take the charge. That's his third taking charge of the game. And we still have 17.33 left. I wouldn't be surprised if he got one more. And that, that's the second one of this half, and it's just started. I mean, yeah. he, he's either flopping or just doing a really good job at getting set and taking those charges. I don't know. Well, okay, this one for sure, he took the charge. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Maybe the first or uh, the second one he had was a little bit of a his first one was, he took that like a man. I, you know what, I can't be mad at that. Lady turns it over into the hands of Whitaker. Also before that turnover, Solano made a sub as Wilson is out and the sniper, Matthew Elliott is in. He is kind of struggling tonight as he is one of four from, or yeah, one of four from three point range tonight. And we're gonna have a merit timeout. Solano up 35-29. We have 17 minutes and 13 seconds left to go in this game. This will be our final game of the night. Going back to uh, number 21, Ellie, I mean, he may be one for, for four right now, but sometimes it seems like whenever he gets going, it's that second half, like that jump start from halftime, and he'll, he'll make like four in a row, and then he'll be a star of the game. So, I mean, anything could happen with him. Yeah, Elliot kind of has his shooting slumps and his shooting highs. Um, right now, he is in a little bit of a slump, but like you said, Holden, and I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, keep shooting those shots. They're going to they're gonna fall. I mean, you can have your nights where you struggle, don't get me wrong, but they're going to fall. And I, you know, I can see him getting, I can see him making at least two more. Yeah, I mean that like, was a really quick whistle. I'm sorry, I, I kind of reacted weird. <laughs> it happened. He literally got. Uh, they gave Holt the ball. He literally kind of, you know, did the smack thing to kind of get everybody ready, and like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they blew the whistle. Yeah, I mean back to Ellie. I mean, I, I like the old saying, "Shooter's gonna shoot." I mean, that's yeah. what he. That's exactly what he does. So no, that was <laughs> as, as long as he keeps doing that. So uh, he'll be good. Yeah, very well said. As we're about to hit the 17 minute mark. And this one, Solano moving the ball around. 12 seconds left on the clock, Whitaker! Oh, you fancy, huh? The Euro step left hand finish over Ziz, and he's gonna talk a little trash Sen's, about that one. Sen's coming in for Caldwell. He's been very good on, yeah. hu hustling on defense, get, you know, putting his hands up against a very tall uh, Ziz. I mean, he's been playing really good filling in for Caldwell. Yeah, oh man, uh, Lady. Missed that one and it had a weird bounce. Ziz got the offensive rebound and put it back and now he's gonna go to the line for a chance at a three point play and he is, and they are cutting into this deficit. As it is 37, 31. Solano still has the lead but kind of barely hanging on. Merritt is fighting back. Well folks, join us after uh, 
this broadcast ends. We will have our next broadcast. It'll be another double header as the Falcons will play host to Mendocino. Both the women's and the men's teams will face off against Mendocino. The women's will start it off at 5.30, and then the men's game will follow right after 7.30 start time. So right back to the action, just about a day break. And those games and broadcasts will take place on the 5th of January, which is this Friday. Women's game starts at 5.30. Matthew Elliott hitting a three and a much needed one as that wakes up Solano and hopefully that'll wake up their offense a little bit as they've been kind of in a slump. 40-32, Solano has the lead. I mean, he just got the ball and shot it. I mean, that's what he does all Catch day. Even it. if he's been missing, he'll still shoot it. Catch and that's and shoot. what I love from him. If we were playing 2K, he would have a Hall of Fame catch and shoot badge, let me tell you. Hall of Fame catch and shoot and, and Hall of Fame limitless range. Okay. I was, yeah. That one's a good one, too. Yeah. I was going to say Hall of uh, I was gonna say uh, Gold Corner Specialist, too. Oh, that yes. was one game. Yeah. Not, uh, not this semester. The last. Uh, yeah, about last semester. Um. He was in that corner right here closest to us that we're staring at directly. Obviously, they can't see, but what we're seeing, three in a row. Just mm -hmm. every time down the floor, he ran to that corner, three in a row. So he, he would have a lot of good shooting badges. He would be a good uh, 2K player to use for sure, <laughs> for shooting. Mary at the line. This is Higgs. Making both free throws, and that cuts... The lead down to six. And I apologize. Uh, it was Hicks. I said Hicks. My apologies. Hicks making both free throws. I'd like to see Merrick keep Hicks in some more. Matthew oh. Elliott! He back turns back. it on. He just yep. turns it on. Someone might need to turn on the sprinkler system sooner than later. Quick stoppage by the refs. I, I believe, uh, I think the refs, and not just these, I'm talking refs in general, have kind of their own communication or language. Because there's times where we really wonder what the heck is going on. You know, like right there, what are you guys talking about from that far? Like, yeah. blow the whistle inbound the ball. What, what are we talking about? Like, respectfully. Nice pass by Ziz, but a nice finish, too, by Rockefeller. I yeah. still like that last name a lot, by the way. That's a very cool last name. Yeah, that's what Merritt needs to keep doing is just fi find guys open in the post. That's what that's what they like to do. They're a big, tall team. I mean, they're not really a three-point shooting team, and they, that's what they were forced to do in the first half and also have to shoot free throws, which they also weren't very good at in the first half. Yep. They need to keep doing that stuff in the post like they just did. Eight seconds on the shot clock for Solano. Nice pass by Samo and a tough finish by Whitaker, but nonetheless... Points are points, however you get them. 45-36, Solano, nine-point lead. Whitaker once again stepping up for Solano in with, with Har Harwell meet missing. Yep. I like, regardless of the situation, I always love when a player steps up for a, a key player missing. Because Cardwell, he doesn't show it on the offensive end, but this is a key player for this team. He brings energy, he brings hustle, and he brings defense. He crashes the boards, putbacks. I mean... You know, he's not going to go down and make three threes like Matthew Elliott, but Cardwell is going to always offer you something. So for Whitaker to come in and replace a pretty good, uh, pretty big piece for this Solano team, he's doing a phenomenal job. Mm -hmm. Good ball move from Solano. Samo is going to take it himself. He's going to miss. I think he should have been fouled, but I guess not. Mohamed Ziz is pushing. And turnover into the hands of Whitaker. God, wow, uh, Whitaker threw a dart to uh Yeah, that was a Whitaker pass. Now a three. Short this time. Jerkees Jones, the tip. Nice effort by Jones yeah. right there. Good tip, and this Solano crowd loves it. We got some fans up in their seats. 47-36. Solano has the... The largest lead of the night as they are going to call Samo for the blocking foul. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Elliott making those just those two threes. I mean, it's really turned on the whole team. It just it, his his flaming fire that's coming from is just spreading to the entire team. Yeah. Yeah, really uh, kind of re a rejuvenation for not only himself because he was missing, but for Solano and their offense. 
Couple of substitutions as we see Whitaker and Samo come out of this game. Trey Knight and number four, Miles Gunther, are checked back in. And substitution for the Cougars as well. Actually, a couple substitutions. Will Coleman Ford comes back in for Rockefeller. And Nahom Sahay is out. Nick Mangrim will come back in for Merritt. He wears number two. Josh Palmer at the line. Goes one, uh, two of two, excuse me. Cut into the lead here. Solano's only up by nine. That was another heat check shot by Elliott. So he's kind of cooled off now. 13-34 left to go. Final half of this game. And that was a tough shot by Mr. Palmer. And yeah, that was a nice take by Palmer. He just got the ball and he saw the mismatch was there. He had the size difference and he just shot it and made it. Yeah, Mohamed uh, Saziz always uh, also, excuse me, sub out. And no call there. Gunther. Oh, what a move. He just, he just couldn't finish, but good move nonetheless. And yeah, that is, I was I just had to clear, get some clarification. But yeah, checking in for the first time for Mohamed Ziz uh, for Merritt, number 25, Finley Reed, who's getting his first uh, minutes in this one. He checked in on the last whistle. Miles Gunther going to go to the line to shoot two after almost getting that three-point play. The freshman out of Richmond, the 6-2 guard, will miss the first. Couple more subs for Merritt. A very quick break. A very quick break for Sahay as Nick Mangrim will take a seat. This is what Solano needs to needs to continue doing. Draw fouls is the first between Merritt and Solano has been key. This what's keeping Merritt in this game right now? Yeah, Eli Hicks also checking uh, back in for Merritt. Three, Katie on Merritt moving. Homer Ford, gonna take it himself on Gunther. He's gonna miss Finley Reed, the rebound. And in short time, Reed's gonna get a rebound and a chance at his first points of this game and to cut Merritt's deficit to six. Solano making a couple substitutions. Chapman and Matthew. Oh, no, never mind. We're gonna have to wait on those substitutions. My apologies. We'll wait on those substitutions, but we'll set the substitutions for you. Chapman and Elliot look like they're going to be the ones subbed out as uh, Bank is open still late, apparently. As uh, Whitaker and Ray Holt are going to check back in. Yeah, Elliot and Chapman out. Whitaker and Ray Holt are in. Yeah, I think Solano likes having Whitaker in with one of their their biggest, whether it's Ziz or um, uh, Reed in at, at center for them, especially because the, the height difference isn't as as a big of a margin when they have, say, Elliot in. Yeah, no, I agree. It's about, you know, you got to... All right, they're going to call a lane violation on Merritt, so even though they missed the free throw, it doesn't matter. Solano is... Going to get the ball and inbound it. 12.37 left to go. Trey Knight. Nice pass to Holt. Miles Gunther. Jones, top of the key. Whitaker, the screen on Lady. Trey Knight. Shake and bake, young fella. Nice left hand as well. What a tough finish for Mr. Knight. Oh my, oh, no, I don't agree with that. No, no, no. Back to that offensive possession, Knight had a great first step on that defender, and Merritt Mer didn't have anyone in the post to block that, and he just took it up and that had a nice little layup for him. Yeah, my apologies, I, I kind of overreacted a little bit. That was just a really, like, from what I saw, ticky-tacky foul. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, he, Trey Knight was just running back on defense, and then the dude ran into him. I, I, 
I don't really know how you can necessarily call anything on that, but I mean, I guess you have to. It must be in some referee handbook. I'm not too sure. And that also puts Merritt into the bonus already with 12 minutes to go. Everything has a purpose in life, whether it's something big or something small. So we'll see if that bites them in the butt later on for Solano. Nice pass to find Gunther. He cannot finish, though. That's kind of one of the things uh, I've addressed with Gunther is he's a very high motor player and energi an energizer uh, for the bench, but he kind of sometimes plays a little too wild where he kind of needs to slow it down and calm it down a little bit, but he's got a lot of good tools and he is, you know, besides that, I mean, he's a player you want on your team just because of that high motor. Yeah, he definitely does have a high motor from what I've seen from him, especially with this limited playing time yeah. tonight. I mean... He had he had that almost and one and where he, where he got fouled yeah. and he he got up I mean oh absolutely oh yeah he rose for it and you know what it was kind of one of those things where it rimmed out he probably should have made uh, you know probably should have went in it just just kind of unlucky for him unfortunately uh, eight seconds to go here Jones is gonna work with the clock nice pass to find Gunther tough finish I re I you know what I respect the effort that's a tough that's a tough finish. Good defense from Knight and Ray Holt together. They collapse on Sahay. Knight, oh, he wanted it. Landy closed out on him at the right time, though. Nice move. Jaquise Jones. He's got Sahay. A little nice one-on-one. One. Nine to three. Too short. Too short, too short. Too short. And... Yeah, that's going to stay with Solano. They're going to call... I was gonna, yeah, Whitaker was getting his jersey pulled. So they're going to... Keep it here. That's going to be on number 25, uh, Finley Reed. Now, I like the fire from uh, from the freshman right there. I mean, he was in the corner just calling for it, even yeah. though he, he had just a little. Look at him. Uh, and I he mean, got blocked that time. Yeah. Right back. back. Oh, what nice that? Finish. I mean, he, he's on fire right now. After he missed that three, he wanted that three so bad. I mean, I like the fire he's playing with right now. I, I love it. I like that too, especially as a freshman trying to earn your way, earn yourself in the rotation. Still, Jaquez Jones. Nice finger roll for the finish. 54-42, Solano. 12-point lead. We got about 10-50 left to go. Great defense here by okay. Solano at, towards the middle of this half. I mean, that's what they need to keep doing, playing pesty defense like we were talking about. Yeah. Landy kind of shaking and baking. He, sh he shook Jaquise Jones, got kind of blew by him, but unfortunately he shook himself too and he turns it over. Merritt now up to... Yeah, it seems, now, seems yeah. like Solano's got ladies, ladies' number, I mean, tonight. Yeah. He hasn't been able to do much. Yeah, I was getting ready to say before the announcer and all the whistles were going crazy, I believe Merritt called a timeout, but uh, the turnover department, Merritt, 19 turnovers compared to Solano's 10. Obviously, that's a big, you know, that's kind of a reason they're down. But also the big one, I think, is this number, the points off turnovers. Eight points for Merritt, 22 for Solano, a 14-point differential. And that is why this team has the lead right now, along with some other stuff too. But for the most part, the points off turnovers is the story. Yeah, I mean, Solano's a very fast-paced team, and when they get those turnovers, they're going to be on a fast break almost every time, and they'll have numbers, especially against a bigger, slower Merit team. And when they have numbers, they're pro most likely going to score. And that, that's where all these points off turnovers are coming from, and especially when Merit already almost has 20 turnovers, and we're halfway through the second half. Yeah, yeah exactly. Solano, yeah, well, Merit 19, Solano 10. We got about 10 minutes left. Like you said, Holden, we're at the halfway point. And, uh, you know, another story, too, to give Solano is uh, I was going to say bench points. They're up 25-10, but also, as I was kind of going through, too, points in the pay 24-14. to They have, like, 10-point differentials in most of these categories. That is why Solano has this lead. Of course, you know, some other things, adjustments, defenses, etc. But, you know, when you have a 10-point differential in a good amount of the categories, especially the scoring categories, you know, you should – come away with the win but also be winning the game as Solano's doing so as long as they keep up what they're doing and keep this lead and don't let it get away from them I mean wow what a move he kind of hung in midair Miles Gunther the left hand layup wow that's, that's his athleticism right there he's been doing that he just can't he just hasn't been able to have it fall but there he gets it to fall and he's 
That's a nice little jelly layup, as I like to say. Yeah, I was mid-conversation, but man, that, that move was beautiful, and I love the hang time. Lady three, he's been struggling. Mrs. Jaquise Jones is pushing three on one. Oh, wow, blocked by Lady on Trey Knight. Way to get it back. And it's gonna go to the Cougars. Yeah, Lady, I mean, he got that block, but he still does very, seems very unhappy with how their team is performing, especially with how he's performing too. I mean, he had a wide open three right there and he just can't land. They're one for seven from the three. from the three. I mean, all their points are really coming from the free throws right now. And they just can't really get anything going on offense besides when they draw a foul. Yeah, I mean, Merritt, 23 of 32 from the free throw line as they turn it over to Solano, 72%. Solano, nine of 12, 75%, both teams making a living at the line. Jaquise Jones, the rainbow. I believe someone left the door open. Ray Holt tried to save it, and it'll go to the Cougars. Taking up the ball for Merritt is number one, Sehi. Wow, they called a foul on Jaquise Jones. Yeah, foul on Jones right there. I'm, That's another yeah, ticky tacky, -tacky, -tacky. call right there. And you know yeah. what? That first one was on him too. Yeah. And he will uh, now be subbed out for Samo. And now he just got a tech. Maybe for some extra talking after the call to the ref. Um, um, um. I mean, we don't know what he said, so. I, I understand, but I don't know. I uh, I kind of feel like these referees are a little bit softer than normal referees. We've seen a lot of, like, weird kind of referee huddles over nothing. We saw the the yelling from the scorer's table from the inbound line. I, you know, unless I literally just kind of looked down for a second to look at the stats. I mean, that was the quickest technical foul I think anyone's ever been called for. Yeah. Uh, so, again, just some kind of ticky-tacky foul. Solano still has a, com a decent lead, a good lead, excuse me, but uh, a little less on the ticky-tacky fouls, and uh, I think I can go I can go home a happy man. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Palmer at the free throw line makes the first two, and now he's going to get an extra f couple free throws for the, fou the foul before the technical Definitely, foul. Yeah. So a lot of points being added on here for Merritt. Yeah, they. I mean – Makes the first. I mean, you can cut it down to 10 if he makes this one. Yeah. And that's really a, how they're staying in this game is these these free throws. I mean, they've shot nearly 35 free throws this entire game. And he makes the second one. Bring up the ball for Solano. Is Sam Passes it to Gunther. He's double teamed. And that's the aggressiveness you were talking about, which is can be costly but can also be good for them and he draws a foul right there but that was close to being a turnover by Solano uh, you know what I was <laughs> before even anything happened and you were talking I was gonna take a breath and say he turned it over because of all the steps but tr that foul call bailed him out that yeah we'll just leave it at that yeah <laughs> that's all we'll leave it at because if he would have took even a ha another half step oh we would have seen the travel yeah for sure. No oh, wow, oh, push it into the key and yeah. puts it in. Big body right there for a guy who's not that big of a body. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well said, yeah. I, I mean, I, for me, it's not even about who's got the bigger body. It's the aggressiveness. Yeah. I mean, that, he came out real aggressive. Ziz puts it in right there in the key. He had a mismatch. Kind of a funky layup, too. A little yeah. like double, what, double clutch? Yeah, yeah. Double clutch. a little yes. double clutch. Uh, Mayor on the press here after Solano inbounds it. Gunther seemed like he kicked it into a Merritt player and it goes out of bounds, Solano ball. Gunther once again was trying to drive in with the ball, being a little aggressive like we've been saying he is. And now it looks like Merritt will make a substitution. They bring out number 24, Josh Palmer. No good on the layup. Good defense there by Merritt. Number 21, Ziz with the ball. Passes it over to La Lady. Say he with the jumper and he gets it through over Samo. Tough jump shot. Tough jumper right there. 
And once again, Mara back on the full court press, which seemed to be working for them earlier in the game. Passes out to Gunther, past the half court line, and Lady with his length and gets it in with the layup. That was a great nice play finish. back and forth by Lady. That was a that was a, a nice but tough finish by Lady, but on the defensive end, well done. And man, this press is kind of working. And oh, that's a big the block. block. He, I, I kind of saw that coming. He was waiting for that one. Mira on the fast break puts it in. It is number 12, Rocka, or excuse me, number 14, Comerford. And now Solano turns it over, giving it back to Mara. And now it's only a four point game with just under eight minutes to go. I got no words right now. This game just flipped yeah, on just, its head within yeah. a minute or two. I mean, this is like, I mean, it seems like I don't five, this is ridiculous. But this, is pretty, this is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it seems like five minutes ago, it was a 12 point it Solano was. lead. No, it was five minutes ago. That's what I'm saying. It's just the, the, the switch has been flipped for Merritt. Solano's making a few subs. Wilson back in, Elliott, Chapman. Yeah. So maybe some all new their life. Starters, yeah. yeah, some new life. Maybe this will be. Uh, will be what they need. But Merritt right now is, they're, they're cooking with grease. Yeah. And a foul and called. And a foul called on Whitaker. That, that's another Solano foul. I mean, they're gonna get free throws for that, which is just giving them gimme points. And the free throw, first free throw is good by Ziz. And Merritt will be making a sub. Subbing out number one, Sehi. Looks like they want to get some length on the floor. Misses the second free throw, rebounded by Whitaker. Wilson will take up the ball. They're, once again, Merritt pressing. Oh my, almost another almost. turnover. And yeah. Hey, you know what, they better, uh, if I'm married, I'd calm down right there because that same thing happened to Solano and they teed some players up and Ziz looked like he's about to scream his head off. <laughs> he's been kind of talking a little bit, but uh, it is what it is. Inbounding for Solano is Chapman. And he turns it, turns it over and Comerford puts it in on the fast break. It is only a one point game now. Oh man. This, this press is working for Mare. Everything's just going their way right now on both ends of the floor. Oh and no. Almost another another one. Another, another turn. Oh, he yeah, okay. And he was out of bounds. All right. Yes. Yep. Okay. But I mean it, it's mare has got a lot of momentum right now. Their bench is fired up. I, it's a one point game. We got a game here, folks. Yeah, I, what a, I mean, what a change of events within the last four to five minutes. I mean, we were just talking about a 12-point lead. It is now gone, erased, probably forgotten. Now, Solano only has a one-point lead. They're up 58-57, 6 47 left to go. So the clock is starting to wind down, but there is still time for, you know, Solano to pull away or even merit to make a run and take the lead. Yeah, I mean, Solano, they've just been turning the ball over, I feel like, every possession, and Merritt's taking advantage of it, especially, especially now bringing it to a one-point game. And Merritt, they're the ones that have been turning the ball over all game, but they've completely flipped the script on Solano. And, you know, I mean, the press, I think, has been a really big story for them, and if they were doing that this entire game, they might be ahead right now. Uh, you know what? I I couldn't agree more with that. You know why they you know why they kind of pulled out the press later in the game is kind of questionable. I'll kind of leave that up to the merit coach because again, I'm not I'm not a coach. I'm a broadcaster. But yeah, I I think if they were playing how they're playing right now, I would say they would have not only a lead but the way Solano's offense has been right like in this time, they might have a pretty good lead, good size lead too. After the timeout, they now have a reset to get going on offense that now they have in their stars. I mean, they've got Wilson in it and uh, Elliott, the sniper. C Wilson coming with the ball. Kicks it out to Samo. And he stepped out of bounds, turning the ball over back to Merritt. 
Wow. And that was almost a blocking foul on Mera as well, but it, he stepped out right before it happened. Right at the last possible second, Samo stepped out of bounds, and it looked like he kind of was holding like his leg or his knee for a second there. So hopefully he's all good and didn't get shaken up too hard. Comerford taking it up for Merritt. He's guarded by Elliott. Kicks it out to the wing to throw good. Lady just misses the floater. Ziz gets the rebound. Fouled before the shot by Whitaker. He will get free throws. I like the substitution right here that Coach Matt's doing. Chat, Chapman out, Trey Knight is in. He was kind of showing that uh, He's got that dog in him. You know, yeah. when he gets his time, like yeah. calling for the three, even though he missed it and yeah. was blocked. The, the left hand layups we've seen, I mean, throw him in there. Maybe he's your spark yeah, plug. Or get Elliott going might. again with the threes. Yeah, he might light a fire on that defense, especially. And Elliott, if he gets going on threes, Solano might take this game away back from Merritt. Absolutely. Ziz, uh, a rough one on Whitaker as he gets the layup, and Merritt has the lead. They are up by one. Wow. I think that's their first lead of the game. And Samo calls timeout by himself. Wow, Merritt is hyped up over there on the bench. Solano on the other side looks a little out of sorts now that they're down by one with just six minutes to go in the game. I will, you know what, it's still time left, but as of right now, I'm a little worried about Solano. I feel like Merritt is like draining the life out of them. Like this is one of those games where it literally flip the switch and I you know for Merritt I mean this is like I don't know I, I'm kind of you know this was at the you know we were talking at the end of the first half how they had the lead I wouldn't have said this was happening I felt like Solano I don't want to say Solano would have cruised to a win because no no victory is easy but I would have said you know they have a really good chance of winning now uh, you know what they they could end up losing this game the way they're the way they've been playing the last about uh, I'll say about six minutes they're they're throwing away the game. Yeah. Right now. Like I mean, I just have to be you know I just have to speak what's on my mind. Like you know, they're 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 throwing it away right now. Yeah. I mean, Merritt is also getting a lot of offensive rebounds yeah. over over this whole stretch, and they have an 11 rebound total uh, lead over Solano, and then also they're cutting the turnover uh, difference between the two teams because they're making Solano turn the ball over and miss a bunch of bad shots that Solano is taking. Well, That's really what's put them ahead in this game right now. Real quick, uh, before we go back to the action that, about the turnovers, we were t talking about, you were talking about a little more than I was, but Merritt had about 18, 20 turnovers just going in the first half. They haven't really turned the ball over, and now Solano's about to catch up. Yeah. They're five off. They have Solano has 15 now, and we've seen about, uh, I would say about three of them in the last minute Yeah. from Solano. Well, so, so it looks like Merritt's gone to a a zone is because they're playing man-to-man -man on the Solano offense earlier in the game they've gone to a zone and it's been working out for them uh, yeah I think so as Wilson oh, oh man, man a shot by Wilson right there he just steps back on one foot and just swishes it right through the basket giving Solano the lead back well difficult shot but well needed lady missing that uh, that bank shot the bank is not open and they get another offensive rebound that's been the story of this these last 10 minutes. I mean, Merritt using the size to get those rebounds and getting second chance points. Size and length, my friend. We've been talking about that all night about Merritt. Up. Nice steal by Samo. Yep. And Wilson taking it up the court. He drives in. Blocking foul on Merritt. Nice take there by Wilson. He, He's, he's trying to take the game into his hands right now because he knows he's the guy to you know, to take the lead back, especially after they, I don't want to say choked, but yeah. they had a 12-point lead, and now it's only a one-point game. It's slipping away for sure, but yeah. uh, like you were, I'm going to kind of go off you what you said about Wilson. Yeah, he's the, you know, like, he's the star of the show. He's the he's the guy. He averages the most points. He averages 18. You know, like, he's, he's your focal point of offense. And I'm definitely not saying none of these guys can go out and get a bucket. That is not true. Toronto has a lot of guys that are gifted off on offense, We've seen Matthew Ellett's three-point shooting. Uh, you know, for example, Miles Gunther's uh, uh, Energizer Bunny type uh, 
mode along with his offense going is dangerous. You know, Trey Knight, the freshman, you give him a little confidence in a couple shots. I mean, we've seen what he can do. He can yeah. kind of catch fire, whether it's from three or he's, you know, driving on you. Wilson uh, makes that free throw, so now they have a three-point lead. But, you know, they have options. But, I mean, if you were to look at a guy and go, okay, who, who's going to score? I'm going to look at Wilson first. It's not even close. And then after that, you know, we can talk about that. You know, I'll throw Jaquise Jones' name in there. Elliot, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Whitaker, uh, you know, in this game has kind of shown he can, you know, maybe we see a little more offensive touches for him depending on uh, what happens with Cardwell. If there's any I, – I don't think he's going to get he's suspended probably, or anything I don't like that. I'm not suspended. saying it like that. But just, you know, yeah. maybe coach says, you know, hey, that outburst wasn't okay. Maybe, you know, he says, let me – you know, you're going to come off the bench. We're going to let Whitaker start. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. If he gets suspended, which I don't think he will, but if he does for whatever crazy reason, that is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Cole Ford misses the first free throw. Got fouled by Elliott. He misses the second one. Tough break there for Merritt. And it's Solano Ball. That would have cut it to a one point lead, and he missed both free throws, keeping it a three point margin. Elliott passing it in to Wilson. Merritt still pressing. Hey, got to. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Wilson getting double teamed, almost loses the ball. Finds Knight, Knight pushing into the basket. Sets back out. Wide open in the corner. Knight and Wilson kind of just playing a duo right there. Yeah. Back and forth. Little two man game. Out to Knight for three. Just short. Looks like a foul was called on Merritt. A loose ball foul called on number 24 Palmer. Wow, I thought that was actually going to be a late. Okay, yeah, they're going to give it to him. Yeah, I, I kind of thought it was a little late because it was after the shot and kind of what transpired, but they're going to give it to him. It should be one and one for Whitaker, I believe. Yeah, I you're believe. right. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, one and one. Right. And they're going to substitute Lady back in for Ziz. Looks like Merritt's going for a little bit of a small ball lineup with Lady in at center. Yeah, Solano getting, I think, a little bit more length on the floor and a little more athleticism, subbing out night for uh, number four, Miles Gunther. Maybe to kind of keep keep up, keep pace with uh, the Cougars. Yeah. Whitaker makes the first one. He will get a second. Big, big free throws right big, here. Yeah, big you free You know what, throws. even if you walk away one or two, I still think that's you know you that's cool, but yeah, it makes it a two possession game. You want obviously sure. you want to make both, but yeah, you know you can't you can't be mad if he comes away with. I want to give credit to Whitaker for you know having a good game all around, filling in for Cardwell. Yeah, I think he's really like I think he stepped up to the fact where you know maybe there's maybe coach does a lineup change whether there's punishment for Cardwell or not. Maybe you just. Decide one game. Hey, let's try this. Let's let's make Whitaker, Let's keep Whitaker in as a starting with the starting lineup and go from there. And Merritt turns it over. Slow with the steal. They're on a fast break, but it looks like they'll slow it down, trying to take some time off the clock with this lead. Smart. I like it. Back to what we were saying about Whitaker and Cardwell. I think Solano could try maybe a, yeah, a double just... lineup with both of them in Cardwell in at the four and Whitaker in at the five. I mean, that's a lot of length. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of length for a smaller team. Elliott for three, and he hits it in the corner. Like you were saying, he is a corner specialist. Yes. And that puts him up seven with just three and a half minutes to go. Lady with the ball, passes it in. And he trips and turns it over. Got through on the break. Oh, oh yeah. Rim that. That's going to be a rim violation on Lady. What a play there by Gunther to avoid the block and go up and under. Even though he missed it, I mean, Lady's the one that grabbed the rim. It could have gone in. Oh, it, no, it, it would have went in. Yeah. I mean, he pulled it down right as the ball went around. I saw the way the ball went off the, oh, there is a, a merit injury. Never like to see that as that's a Rockefeller. He's limping on ankle, leg. Do hope he's okay. But, yeah, no, no, no. That that was going in. That was going in even at, with, without Lady pulling down like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That was dumb, but at the same time, like, I feel like that was two points regardless, so can't really be too mad at Lady. Lady with the ball on offense. Has a he just shit. drives. He just drives. He's he's so fast for his size. I mean, he oh, they just gave Lady a technical. Wow. 
Got too hyped up. I mean, he did. I, you know what? Yeah. That's not bad. That's you got to call that, unfortunately. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. I mean, if you're. You're calling technicals on Jones and all that stuff from earlier. You gotta, you call, gotta that. call that. Bro yeah. screamed like in somebody's face. Yeah. Come on. Like, come on. That was a nice play there, though by Lady as he just took advantage. He, he's he's taller than Whitaker yeah. and he's faster, so he just took took off with the hesitation and just slammed it. Yeah. But yeah, that was that tomahawk dunk we wanted to see earlier that yeah. he, that he missed and he got it that time. Unfortunately, he had to taunt a little too hard and that is gonna cost him and uh you know what uh, in the long run that that might have that might hurt him yeah yeah it's giving uh, Wilson three points I mean I wouldn't say might I think it will yeah and now that cuts it to a nine point or that that brings it to a nine point lead for Solano yeah and they're gonna get the ball yeah that was yeah that was really costly cost inbounding it when it happened yeah so costly very costly. Technical by Lady. Nonetheless, Solano does have a nine point lead as they are back to the press. Foul on Lady now. Yeah, he's getting frustrated and, too. Yeah. You can tell by his facial expression. And that now they're gonna get more free throws. Yeah. Make it a double digit lead. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, if Lady even shows any sign of emotion or kind of gets a little loud, he's going to get tossed. I can tell by his facial reactions yeah. and just the way these refs have kind of been with the whistle and the technicals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, he could, I, I could see tossed, it happen. Yeah. yeah. And Gunther, you know, as this all this, all this momentum has been shifting towards Solano, he's been a very high motor for this team, and I, I, I like it. Oh, yeah. I mean, you want... You know, you want guys like that. You know, yeah. Solano has Solano has players. It's nothing against any other teams, but Solano has players that you want on your team. You want guys that have energizer motors. Yeah, maybe they're not giving you, you know, maybe they're not splashing threes and giving you like 15 to 20 points a game. But what doesn't show up in the box score is showing up on the court for guys like Gunther, Jeremiah Cardwell, if he's playing. You know, those type of guys. Yeah. You know, you don't look at their offense enough numbers and go, oh, he had a bad game because he had two points or zero points, whatever yeah. the thing may be. You're looking at him from, you know, the defensive stats and, you know, if you're a spectator in this game, what they really bring. Gunther goes one of two. Yeah. But just that type of, you know, he's a great, yeah, I like guys with that type of motor. Yeah, La Lady just taking advantage of the size difference right there. He's just so quick for how tall and lengthy he is. I mean, just because I had the smack on the backboard, I thought for like the smallest second that Gunther blocked him. Yeah. And they just caught a trap on Wilson. on Wilson. Yeah, he's, uh, he's trying to bl break the double team and try to step through it. He might have taken that pivot foot off the ground. Uh, yeah, so Hay was pressing him pretty tough, but it is what it is. At least, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's what Mary needs to keep doing. Of course, those turnovers on the press. Up and under for Sahay, nice finish. Yeah, for Sahay, nice finish right there. Cutting it to a six point deficit. About 2.30 left to go. Play mm -hmm. smart. That's all you can do is just play smart. And kill Samo. Count. Samo fouled right there by Colt Ford. Now bring him to the line for two free throws as they're in the double bonus. I'll tell you what, these coaches on the merit sideline are talking quite a bit. I'm I'm kind of surprised they haven't been teed up. Like right there, that's a technical. Yeah. That was Solano, that's a technical. Yeah. I mean, look, he's still arguing. Look at him. Come on. Call of, tee him up all right. It's like when I was at the Kings game when they played the Suns game, like Booker was just crying and crying. Obviously, the ref doesn't hear me because I'm far up. But yeah. But I yelled at the top of my lungs, hey, ref, you need to tee him up. He's crying too much. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not trying to wish technicals on anybody, but, I mean, it gets to a certain point where you need to shut up and live with the call. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, Samo makes one of two. He missed the first one, makes the second. Bring up the ball is Sehi. Seven point lead, still Solano still has a little cushion, but not too much, especially if Merritt hits a three right here. Yeah, I mean, anything could happen. They It turned into a Ooh. missed three right there, and he passes up the court. What a pass. What a dime. Yeah. Got there with the ball. What a dime. Oh, Sam almost loses it. Lady came up from behind him, surprised him. He got the ball back, gives it to Wilson. Wilson kicks it out to for three. Oh, just so yes. close. Just short. And he stepped out as he was trying to throw it back in. That is Solano ball. Good effort there by saying he just barely stepped out. And it'll go back to Solano. Yeah, say say hey wants that one back for sure. But uh, you know what? Regardless, you gotta get what you gotta take what you can get. So. Yeah. 
72-65. Solano in control by seven. That was Gunther good. passes it all the way over to Elliott. He drives in, gets a nice, oh, it just goes in and out. Unfortunate, that's all you can yeah. say about that. Whoa, yeah, oh, Hammer oh. pushed off, but they're gonna call the foul on Matthew Elliott. Yeah. Good composure by Elliott not to get, you know, show emotion, get too yeah. mad right there, because if that was me in a game like this, I would have erupted. Yeah. I would have erupted. Yeah, that's a close call to make, especially in transition like that. But he will get two free throws for that. Could yeah. cut it to a five-point game. Yeah, these are uh, these are kind of big free throws for Merritt. But also, too, I would say Solano's next offensive possession could kind of dictate the game. And he misses the first one. Boy, that huge blow right there for Merritt. Every point counts at this part of the game. Palmer does have 13 points so far in this game. Second on their team, two lady with 16. Yeah, and uh, uh, Merritt substitution right there. Kind of interesting to hey out the point guard of the team. And uh, Ziz comes back in, so they are, uh, this Merritt team right now currently is big and lengthy. So yeah, Solano's got to be careful. With this press especially. Yeah. Samo, nice, nice shot. Nice, nice bounce off of Ziz right there and takes a nice given shot that he can make. Nice Puts move. It in. Nice play. move and patience by Samo. Yeah. Nice block by Whitaker. Good defense there over a taller Ziz. Boy, Whitaker's been so good on the defensive and offensive end tonight. I love it. Awesome. You know what? He's just awesome minutes he's gotten. He's uh, gotten tonight. Ooh. Ziz with the big dunk. Yeah, Ziz. But in the minutes he's gotten, he's been awesome. That's what I was trying to say. I was kind of mixing my words. But, yeah, he's been awesome in the time he's gotten. Gunther passing it up to Wilson. He's double teamed. And they will call a foul. On oh, Merritt. Yeah. Actually, there's a referee di uh, disagreement. One called a foul, one called a, a jump. Jump ball, yeah. Oh, they will dangerous. call it a jump ball. They will call it a jump ball. It will still be Solano ball. Yeah. I thought that might have been a jump ball from my point of view, but then I s saw the ref call the foul, and I was like, you, you could know, give it to him. I, I mean, you know, I was going to say, and I don't want to sound biased here, but I felt like, just make the, you know, agree on the call. Whether it's a jump ball or a foul, I, I mean, just both agree on the call. You yeah. know, we don't, we don't need those kind of disagreements in a close game like this with a minute left. Like, that's stuff you need to figure out in the first quarter or the first couple minutes of the game. Wilson bringing up the ball. He's getting, almost got a screen from Sam. He puts up a three and just goes in and out. Almost makes it. Oh, and a steal by Gunther after the rebound by Merritt. Yo steps in and gets fouled hard by Ziz. He'll go to the line for two. What an effort there on the defensive and offensive end by Gunter. Yeah, Gunter kind of took an awkward fall. It looked like his back kind of got twisted all around, but nonetheless, good effort, good hustle, nice steal, and go on the line for two. Yeah, that hustle will earn him these that earns him these two free throws that could be crucial if he makes them. It'll put him up to an eight-point lead. Only 47 seconds left. Merritt seems to be running out of time. They need to get a three or something, but they're not a three-point shooting team like we've been saying. Gunther will make the first of two as Ray Holt, Ray Holt excuse me, is going to sub in for Matthew Elliott. 75, 68, 47 seconds left to go. He misses the second one. Uh-oh. Oh, oh line, uh, lane violation. On Lady, oh, wow. Yeah, he, he's getting upset. Yeah. So that'll be just one more free throw for Gunther. He can make it. If he makes it, it'll be an eight-point Solano lead. Just misses. That's two free throws. Rebound by Wilson. Or, excuse me, not by Wilson, by Palmer. Palmer for three. In and out. In and out. Nice effort there by Lady to kick it out. Offensive rebounds. Man, he's been a rebounder yeah. for Merritt. Good shot by Sahay, but yes. man, uh, Higgs has been a yeah. machine. Yeah, especially right under the basket. He'll, he always seems to go up and get it. Yeah. Foul called on Merritt as Samo had the ball and was getting pressed. He will go to the line. 
20 seconds here. That took off a lot of time between yeah. the Gunther's free throws and Merritt's possession. Yeah, well, you know what? That's a that's a credit to Solano. Just uh, good uh, clock management, you know. Yeah, I would say for the most part. But you know what? Hey, 20.9 seconds left. Samuel makes him seven point lead. I mean, you know that. Yeah, Merritt's gonna have to start fouling too. There's yeah. no more shot clock. Yeah, and Lady is uh, gonna take a seat. Lucas Thor, Lucas Thorgood is gonna go in for him. Samo will make the, first, the first. Six point lead now for Solano. Depending on, uh, Samo makes the second. Seven point Solano lead. 16 seconds left, clock is ticking. So hey, gets the left hand, or excuse me, gets the, the layup, not the left hand layup, it was just a regular layup. And they're killing a lot of clock. Wilson is gonna get fouled, 10.2 left to go. 77-72, Solano lead, as we are in the final seconds of the game. Wilson, shooting two, makes the first one. That is point number 20 for him. He is, he leads all scores in this game. And number 21, and those could be potential dagger free throws. 79, 72, Palmer three ball, no good. So hey, rebound. And gets the little friendly roll, point nine left to go. And that's gonna do it for us. The Falcons are going to win it 79 to 74. The women's and men's team come out on top as they beat the Merritt Cougars. We had a doubleheader tonight. The women's team won by 20. The men's team, they're going to win by five tonight as it almost got a little rough at the end, but Solano decides to pull through. 79-74, the final score for the men's team. Stay with us. We are going to uh, try to get a quick post-game interview with Justice Arms, with Justice Wilson, the star of the show tonight. He's got 20. He finished, excuse me, with 21 points. And like I said, folks, join us on Friday, January 5th. We're going to have another, another doubleheader, excuse me, as... Um, Solano will play host to Mendocino. The women's will start at 5.30. The men's will follow right after at 7.30. And we're going to have a post-game interview here. I'm going to be joined in just a moment by Mr. Wilson. What's up, my guy? How you doing, sir? Put that on. I'll give you a quick sec. Thank you for taking the time. I know this is not your first interview. This uh -huh. is number two for you. So, big win tonight. You had a big game, 21 points. Yeah. You guys started off strong. Lead kind of slipped away. But at the end, you guys uh, kicked up the intensity. And, of course, your offense – or, excuse me, your team's offense started yep. to kind of get it going. What were some uh, What were some keys tonight that got you guys this W? Pretty much, you know what I'm saying. I have four fouls. So, when I came in, I tried to, push the, I, I tried to tell everybody to keep the pace low. I'm saying they go there. We, we were up most of we were. I think we were up the whole game. You were so yeah. so basically. You know what I'm saying? Just come in, control the pace. They gonna have to foul. They gonna foul. You know what I'm saying? Go 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 to the contact strong with two hands. That's pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And for your next game, you guys play uh, Mendocino on Friday the fifth. What's yes, one thing, either for you or for your whole entire team, you need to work on within those next day and a half for Mendocino? Man, we need to we need to figure out how to stop fouling, man. Fouling? Yep. That's a. Hey, that's 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 the big focal point for our team. We foul a lot. We're in double bonus, both halves pretty early. So we got to figure out how to play defense and not foul. So that's that's all I got for you, man. Yeah. Hey, hey that's a it. great answer. And you know what? I'll yeah. leave you at that. I know you're exhausted. You had a big game as sir. always, Mr. Wilson, Justice Wilson, number two, joining us. Thank sir. you, sir. I Talk appreciate you as always, and appreciate we will appreciate see you Friday it. when you guys host Mendocino. Yep. Thank all good. You. We gonna be there. Yes, sir. And we gonna all get right. a dub. And we gonna get a dub. <laughs> Yeah, the freshman from Bandon calling the W. 
for this Friday. Well, that is going to be it for us tonight. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We had a doubleheader. It's been a long one. We are just now getting out of here. For all of us here on the Solano College Sports Network, thank you for listening and watching. My name is Blake Molina. Good night, everybody.